shutting down. Shutting down for a while? I know I know what I'm doing on this damn radio show. I don't want anyone influencing me. So fuck you all. Shutting down. Now I don't I don't read emails, I don't write you back. I just gotta go with my instinct. Because these fuckers are getting to me, I'll be totally honest with you. I so I haven't uh, I haven't uh, checked my email in eight months. I go wow. And you know me, I used to be the guy at the old yeah. place, like I would spend hours. Thanks for listening to the program. You know, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. You rock, Opie. I I, I answer no uh, a lot of people now on MySpace. A lot of people uh, write. A lot of it's just comments, so I just you know go through them and post the comments. But some of them uh, they have questions about the show, little comments, and I'll write them back, shit like that. But can you give them instructions that conversation is not to happen? Hey man, hate to bother you, but I just wanted to say thanks. You go thank you, and that is fucking it. Do yeah. not go. Hey dude, n- don't don't write again. I have to. <laughs> don't write. Again. Don't write again. <laughs> Just one email per person. One. I'll give you a response. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But please don't go, oh, and I just all, don't, f- I don't want to correspond with you, motherfucker. I'm just saying thank you. It's, you know what it, it is? If motherfuckers sent a, a letter to Humphrey Bogart and said, I loved you in Casablanca, and he goes, dear fan, nigga, don't send a response to the fucking response. It's over. That's all you get. Dear yeah, fan. I'm glad you liked my motion picture. <laughs> you know, you don't write it back. Hey, Clark, received your email, uh, your email, your letter with a big quill and fucking ink. With a, with a Clark Gable stamp. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, fuck, and this is the same, because, you know, I used to be when my asked me for my autograph, I'd be like, oh, I'll write an entire uh, soliloquy. I would just, mm, yeah. th- thank you so much for Name. And it's just now, it's just like I just I spit on my finger and put a line. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. You f- hey, but getting back to so direct TV, you were saying. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people writing saying that they uh, uh, caught us through direct TV. That's how they listen to us, and uh, it's not just one or two people like that email. No, there's a lot. There's a shitload of people that go, I listen every day on DirecTV. Actually, I ran into a couple of those people at F.H. Riley's. Yeah. They're like, I listen on uh, DirecTV. We haven't got the XM mm-hmm. yet for the car, and I couldn't believe that. It's we a got strange to me. We got the best spot on DirecTV also. Look like it's, it's rocking right, over there. It's right below Channel 2. Huh? It looks like it's rocking over there. Um, you at your brother's place. Oh, it was unbelievable, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a party. It was unbelievable. Direct TV, we are right behind Channel 2. So if you're on Channel 2, you're watching your CSI or whatever it is, and uh, you make a mistake and hit the down channel instead of the up channel, boom, Opie and Anthony show. Radio or television? On te- it's on their TV. You're not uh, cable or, or satellite. Oh, it sometimes with, with has music. their music yeah, channels. Okay. This one butts right up against Channel 2, yeah. which is the best spot. So we get people that are just, you know, they mean to go to maybe Channel 5. And they're on channel two. They make a mistake. They go back and they hear like bum, 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 something from our show and go, "What did I just hear?" Right. Some people might be angry. Some people go, "I got to sit around well, and listen to cool. this." That's pretty cool. It's a great deal for us. Yeah, great. And spot. then you got all the people uh, listening and watching on on Pal Talk. On Pal Talk. <laughs> and then you got the people listening to the show illegally in other countries. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, syndication it's, underground is it, still going. It's becoming a phenomenon. Uh, it's also Whip Out Wednesday. Let's say hi to Sarah in New York. Sarah. Hello. My sister's in traffic, so I'm going to... I'll explain why. Wait, I thought you... But did she call? Did what? Sa- did Sarah call? Yeah. Are you just tired, or did you wake and bake? Um, I'm really tired. Dude, this Whip em Out Wednesday thing is very important, and, and we allow a listener every week to explain it yeah. to everybody else, but... Uh, How old are you? 18. And yeah. where's Sarah? It Which says hasn't Sarah. really changed yet. She's in traffic. So what? She called from the house and said, screw it, I got to go to work and gave you the phone? Yeah. She doesn't have a cell phone? She does, but it just died. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, here we go. Here's Sarah's right. brother to explain Whip Him Out Wednesday. It is Whip It Out Wednesday. You could get a That's loud sticker. Whip Him. Whip them out. Whip it out Wednesday is something completely different that we don't condone. Yeah, Man Cow stole our bit and he turned it into Whip It Out Wednesday. Whip so, it out. So I guess he wanted to see cock in Where's Chicago. Where's the cock? It's Whip Bum Out Wednesday, Sarah's brother. Continue. Oh, okay. Whip Out Wednesday. <laughs> so you got a sticker from opianthony.com, or you could make one. Just put it on your car, not a bandana. 
You see a girl, you honk and demand to see her boobs. <laughs> no, that's not how it goes. <laughs> he said you, demand. You have hey, everything wrong, Sarah's brother. The beauty of Whip em Out Wednesday is you don't harass the women. You just have a wow in your car, <laughs> and there's ladies out there that'll do it because they want to do it. You Baby, just drive. Take right. your titties out. Yeah. <laughs> you pull a gun on them. Yeah. Take Find out your fucking titties now! Included alleyway. You see the sticker, bitch? You want me to put this stick over your mouth and rape and kill you? <laughs> yeah. Now whip them out, bitch! You get your wow sticker from opianthony.com or you send a self addressed stamped envelope. The address is on the website. Look at me, I gotta help you out, Sarah's brother. <laughs> and then you just throw the wow on your car or write in the dirt or make a homemade wow sign and then you just go about your life. That's it. It's the easiest promotion ever. You know, you're the first. First listener that screwed this up since we've gone to the listener explanation of WOW on Wednesdays. I don't think he even uh, knows. <laughs> we'll give uh, another listener a chance in the 9 o'clock hour. All right. 9 o'clock hour is your chance to uh, describe WOW. Where are you going to school? Yeah. Where you go? CSI. What? CSI? CSI? <laughs> Not a TV show? <laughs> Fitting. Yeah. Are you're... you this dumb or are you yeah. just trying to be funny? Yeah, yeah. I need to know. I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> it ain't working, Pally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah's brother. Thank you, Sarah's brother. You're welcome. All right, let's say hi to Ben in Baltimore. Ben. Yo, what's up? What's, what's up, up man? Ben? Hey, Patrice, I just want to say, God damn, it's so great to hear you back. I had to call back right away. Last time I called, the fucking phones went just crazy on me. I lost connection. I, I've been trying to call and get through a while. I just wanted to ask you guys uh, if you could play the, uh, I'm going through the McDonald's drive through I'm done. Oh, shit, I'm not. I just forgot my food. Uh, the reason why I called, <laughs> I know I got my food now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> What the hell is going on this morning? I'm so sorry. All right. Uh, the reason why I called, I've been trying to get through, get through a lot. Uh, once, Patrice, great to hear you. Uh, also, I'd like you guys to go out on commercial more with the Howie XM thing. Which Howie XM thing? The one where he did, uh, I heard it a couple weeks ago, where he was, like, doing an XM commercial. Oh, yeah. That's and I a... think that's so fucking great. Why that's do you think it's great? Beat. Because it's like, hey, Hallie, you're my bitch. Do an XM commercial. <laughs> you get it. I love it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there you go. He loved XM until XM decided to pass on him. Yeah. And now That's he's trashing XM. Now he's That's trashing. what I love. But we have actual audio of him praising XM and how it's a great, great satellite yeah. radio company. Yeah, and it is. And it is. But he's the most honest person in uh, radio. All right, guys, punching out. Patrice, stick around for a while. He's going to be here he's the rest of the week. All, all week. And then he's got his own show on the channel Saturday. Saturday. His relationship show starts uh, Saturday <laughs> night at 8 p.m., I think we it, said. Is it Black Phillip? Yeah, that's what you're going to be. <laughs> Black Phillip. <laughs> I love that. I really do love it. Black Phillip. I'm going to be listening, man. I got to hear that. Yeah. I, I, did, a, I did a preview show on uh, Pow Talk. Uh, a couple of days ago. You did? Yeah, a little preview. I was a lot listening. of people you were uh, holding court? Ah, uh, yeah. I guess Lucy 18 runs it and uh, yeah. Nurse Heather. Yeah, whose, okay. Whose life is just, she needs guidance to to just the, the highest degree. She needs help. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I wanted to help her. We fight, yeah, Well, Patrice is now pretty much addicted to yeah. uh, Pal Talk. The last time Patrice it was here, we were talking about Pal Talk. He's like, what, what, what? We introduced what? him to so it, we had, gave him a camera. We had a webcam. We threw it at him, and now you're just completely hooked and addicted, oh, right? Oh, I can't stop. I cannot stop. Dude, put and it this that, way. And they got the worst picture. Of the, what, yeah. Is that, is that a, a foundry? Yeah. yeah, it's the worst. It's the it's the picture of me figuring it all out. Patrice, yes, yeah, so you're just kind of features. looking at the screen like a lunatic, trying to figure it all out. Am I on cam? Am is the camera look on? At that look, it looks like I'm looking at a little girl, and I'm supposed to be. Look at that yeah, look. Yeah. Like, oh my god. <gasps> you have a but, look on your face like that's dreamy. That's yeah, with the bubbles. But I was just saying, hey, what's this? Some motherfuckers are so psychotic. They just, they got me with the bubbles. They screen capped him with the bubbles. You were able to put, uh, superimpose, uh, digitally, uh, put on bubbles in front of your screen and little doodads and fun little icons and words and things like that. And, uh, his had the bubbles on 
And apparently you didn't turn them off right away. <laughs> so he just had bubbles going on his screen. It was so, and I, and I, and I, and I went into the O&A room. Yeah. So I, I didn't go into like a room, you know, I got banned from a couple of rooms already too. Did you? Yeah, it was. Don't room, harass the girls. BBW room. Yeah. And, uh, it was a skinny girl in there. You know, the BBW is right. Yeah. Uh, big, beautiful women. It's a fetish thing. So I go on to big, beautiful women. And uh, <laughs> it was a skinny girl on camera. I go, what, you know, type, what are you doing here? Well, my girl did it. What are you doing here? And she goes, I love the music. And then we write. Yeah, fat bitches do got good music. <laughs> Bow! Gone. Oh, bounce. Yeah. Bounce. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you're on the pow talk all the time with your, your lady, right? Yeah, man. It's, just, it's, it's great for two yeah. predators like us. Patrice had to get a new computer. That It drove him to buy. <laughs> when it drives you to go out... And but how long did you have your old computer? Uh, about three years. It was three doing years. Well, and all, right. then all of a sudden, it started. And when I went on Pal Talk, and I was like, "This is not working out." Well. Right. I can't open up twenty friggin' screens here and and watch what what they're doing. New computer. When something drives you to buy a new computer just for that. Yeah, you're pretty much hooked on it. As in, and all only program I put on it so far is Pal Talk. It's Pal Talk. <laughs> Pal, Pal Talk. Talk nothing else. It doesn't even have a printer on it yet. <laughs> yeah. You have one icon in the middle. Doesn't even have like yeah. what? Doesn't one even icon. have Explorer. Can't right even not. like go on the web. <laughs> Screw it's that just crap. Pal Talk. <laughs> one one icon on his desktop, right in the middle. Pal Talk. Pal Talk is I really you really are. I, a creep. I really love. It's just to see those real people out there. Just yeah. Puff. Pathetic, and, and me just as but I'm sitting there thinking they're pathetic, but they're sitting there thinking I'm pathetic. Yeah. Everyone's it's, pathetic. Everyone's pathetic. It's so we are so voyeuristic it, as people. We've always been fascinated with the look, peep through the keyhole, sure. the little the glimpse down the blouse. If somebody's like bending over at the supermarket, and you go, "What? I think I just saw a tit." It's, it's I think I, we love. To see shit we're not supposed to see or be inside something. You pass by uh, a window with a curtain open and you're, and you're driving or uh, as a kid on your bike and you see something pass by and you look and go, what the fuck? Well, I just I, looked inside. There. Well, I got to get in those bushes for the next Now I got to climb the tree and but look that's, in the... Uh... That's where the porn thing turned. That's where yeah. porno turned, where porn used to be um, one girl mm -hmm. getting fucked by five strange guys. Right. Now it's five strange girls getting fucked by one guy on porno because people don't want to see the same right. chick. They want new, brand new. No, and it's nothing better than. And on Pal Talk, people have these these one on one conversations in front of everybody. So I'm watching yeah. like Bertha Butt One Sixteen uh, underscore. Uh, <laughs> you know, and she's pulling her tits out for fucking Mandingo one, and in front of everybody. Yeah, and, but it's like it's just a personal a private Hi, moment for the two of them. Tit. And, and a lot of girls yeah. when they show the tit on there, and there's a lot of hangy tits on on Pal Talk. They lift them up in that lift up. I'm a I'm a form a a a, a, a titty like because it's soggy. Oh, yeah, they so gotta they mold it, it with their hand and a little. They mold it into a <laughs> into an acceptable titty. And pop it in front of the camera. <laughs> Look at that titty. They they make it into a firm tit. They push this back, lift the nipple up. Mm hmm. You like that? Because <laughs> the nipple is pointing straight down. Then they lift it up so it's pointing yeah. straight across. Oh, like shit. oh that's yeah, so that's sometimes, hot. Sometimes it looks like they're trying to hold mercury. They don't have yeah. to do it. Just <laughs> flipping out of their hands and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how do I keep all this in my hands without it spilling over the side? <laughs> there are some messes, and but I love it. Even the messes, I don't care. It's just a, it's fun. Well, yeah, we're, we're bringing the Pal Talk cameras everywhere. We're going to be broadcasting live a week from Friday at the Hard Rock. The Pal Talk cameras will be oh, there yeah, for the rest of the country. There. When we were at F.H. F Riley's for late night karaoke, we had Pal Talk cameras. Pal Talk was there. It's They're on the... right now. What's weird, too, you, you look at a screen, you see, I don't know, 12, 15 people listening to the show, and then you'll say a joke, and all of a sudden you'll see the whole screen start laughing. I mean, that is really creepy. Yeah. <sighs> well, because for the first time in radio, you could actually see the listeners as you're doing yeah, a radio react. show. Besides when you go out live, obviously. But... It's a weird culture, and they have no patience for a motherfucker who's new. Like, you know, nah, like nah. somebody sent me a circle smiley face wink with a tongue out. Bitch, what the <laughs> fuck is a cirky, <laughs> a cirky, a, a, cirky <laughs> a yellow, happy, smiley tongue face? Thank you. What does that mean? I don't I don't like the Internet culture. I like this whole thing. But yeah. I want to have regular conversation, not this, you know, you know, a hey, two two lines is hey, wink. Yeah. And yeah. I, Oh, the f that's lonely. Nah, but it's all <laughs> heading. Hook up with some nah, evil, man. That, it's all heading that way, though, where your life is so much more important online than it is in the real world.
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's people... happening with video games. It's happening with the pal talk. It's happening with uh, I don't know the MySpace accounts. Interact. I interact with a lot more people online than I do it's, in real life. Yeah, yeah. that's not good though, dude. That you got. But that's not gonna stop that shit. But, it, but it's I, not gonna really stop. It's just gonna talk, grow. You watch, it's going to grow from here now. It's not going to stop. It's just going to get course, crazier. Of course, because regular people. If I'm people. stuck, let's say I'm stuck uh-huh. in, in a, at a party, right? right? And this asshole comes up to me and starts yapping and yapping, yapping, yapping. I can't just like... You can't click on, I can't, I can't you can't take click on the Xbox and click. <laughs> watch, watch this. Watch what I do here. All right. Uh, See this just, guy? You're just going to take His him. name is Master Paul. <laughs> it's Master Paul. Let's say he was talking to me. This is like me. Auschwitz, man. Leave him. Don't do this. Let's say he was yapping to me. Yap, yap, yap. Boom. And I hit a button. <laughs> and there he goes. Ah, no, no more problem. He's now gone. He's gone. <laughs> uh, just, I, and Master Paul got a thing on his thing. <laughs> you have been banned for you have been bounced. 24 hours. He's gone now. <laughs> now I don't have to talk to him. Oh, my God. He's he, I love my postage stamp size friends. <laughs> he's so mad right because now. Because they could just... Good luck, bro. People should. Good luck. People should have to walk around real life with like the X, the Xbox above their head. <laughs> so they can just click. To on click it. a mouse. I just want to walk around and with they a just mouse. Disappear. Yeah. Bam. And but you I, can just click, and I, they're gone. But yeah. you have to practice your faces. I have. But here's the problem with some of the ONA fans is that they're so retarded. Your your I'm not fucking with you face. Yeah. Just won't work. They just they get that big eyes, those big smiley oh, eyes. Oh, big eyes. Yeah. And you go, thanks, man. <laughs> and you go, his his autograph, man. Anything else you need? Need a picture? Yeah, a picture. Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's real it's life. It's raining stuff. <laughs> it's raining stuff. Dude, right? Hold on. It's raining stuff, right? Yeah. We're going to get into what happened at your comedy show, but before we move on from Pal Talk, you guys got it, because it was hilarious in the office. You got to talk about the typing thing. Oh, The no. difference between guys typing on the computer and chicks, man. My girl... Is mm-hmm. I, I type like I'm trying to correspond with somebody, you know. I'm, if I'm by myself, I go, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, H E Y, and that's in real time, right and there. Then now, I, just and using then index I'm, fingers, and that's real time. <laughs> that is and real I, time. And I measure the mouse <laughs> right. to the thing because the arrow's a little and click. <laughs> right. The next thing, if I'm writing a girl, "Hey, how you doing?" I say, "How's your mother?" And I go, "Bow!" Oh shit! <laughs> that's did, she have that already, <laughs> did she have that already in the computer? <laughs> then, then it's like I. I write something long, and this is the, the culture. I write, okay, I'm going to take an hour to write, and the end. P.S. Love you. Click. Big right. paragraph. Right. Boop. Smiley face. What, bitch? I want give me back. I want an entire paragraph like I just wrote. So if I smiley face, blam. Like, get, yeah. I can't do it without my girl. She, and, and she knows that. Like, I go, uh, uh, uh. I'm trying to like we're trying to like pick up this chick. We're trying to pick up this chicken like Reno or something. Yeah. And and I'm like, you know, my mind's working, but you can't if you can't write as fast as your mind is working. Yeah. It's fucking You're useless. In trouble. My girl can write as fast as my mind works. I right, write write the bitch tell her, you know, tell her hey, how you doing? How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Bow. I'm like, oh, beautiful, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah, we're in. in yes. <laughs> you, yes. Same same thing. My girlfriend can type really quickly. Doesn't have to look at the screen. Right. It's like the 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 Not fingers the, just move like. Blah, blah, blah. And, and it's sent, and it's gone, and it's out there, and it's like a huge, big, fat paragraph of text <laughs> in there. And I, I'm sitting there, like like Patrice says, I'm like, hey, H-E, and then I got to look for the Y. Right. It's been on the same place on this keyboard that I've used. They haven't moved it. As far as I know, that Y has been there since, like, Mickey Spillane is writing on his typewriter. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I can't find it. Home keys, baby. And every girl knows I've never met a girl that goes... H E. No. I've never met a, all women paid attention in typing. You ever class. go to do caps and you actually cross your hand over the other hand <laughs> to, to hit the shift on that side because your other finger is already on the letter you want to capitalize and you, and you don't want to lose it and you forget there's two shifts. There's a shift over yeah. here and a shift. There. Oh, my fingers are twisted up like an arthritic. I, I'm trying to hit the shift and this. It, I, I don't remember anything. But the women just know how to rock on that keyboard. They're talking, looking in another direction. 
And, and, yeah, and, and even... look at the keyboard. No. I hear noises coming from my computer. I'm like, what the hell are you doing over there? Oh, just, uh, just writing a quick email. I type a anything. Quick email? A quick I, book. Anything <laughs> over like a, a sentence. A novel. Anything over a sentence for me, and the subject has changed uh, on what they're talking about. Like, I got something to say, and I'm... Dink, but dink, have you ever and tried then I to send, learn? and I'm like an hour behind their conversation. Have you ever tried to learn it? Have uh, you ever I, tried to do the the whole Mavis Beacon in high school? Thing? In high school, in I high school, they, uh, they I was in some business machine class yeah, yeah. where it was typing and and like an adding machine. I don't know. It was the old Univac <laughs> computer back in I don't know the '40s when I was in high school. <laughs> I was in a, a, a typing course thing, and it was just I couldn't figure it out. There are people that they, they give you the type thing, the thing you're supposed to type, and they're all, you know, their heads are all slightly over their shoulder, or the whole class, yeah. looking at the sheet, and they're all just going at it. And I'm looking at the sheet, looking at the keyboard. But I'm right. sure you look at the keyboard, the teacher is supposed to yell at you. Yeah, well, and I'm going to tell you, I in have the, to look. In the yeah. last two years is when I started reflecting back on. Actually, I remember actually everything I did during during typing class, with like all the jokes. Yeah. All the oh, that's what it was. Pushing yep. the yeah. wrong letter on somebody else's typewriter just to fuck with him and not paying of attention. Course. And now I recognize that at, at the age of 36. How funny is it to just write fuck and look at the word fuck on your p piece of paper? F that's what I would do. Look, F-U-C-K, F-U-C-K. Giggle like an idiot. Yeah. Let's, That's uh, what I did too. I was always joking. All right, let's go to the phones here. We got lots to do today. Jamie in Indiana. Jamie. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey man. Uh, hey, I just wanted to call and uh, pay my respects. I've been an XM subscriber since October, <laughs> and so I got to catch all your good shit with uh, you know Super Bowl, and I got to get all the mouse traps and all that. That's great. I just want to tell you how I got um, to be a part of XM. It's through you guys' buddy uh, Kev Slider, who actually. Uh, used to work with me here at Staples here in uh, Lafayette, Indiana. Yes, we know Kev Slider. So Kev Slider so spread the virus to Jamie in Indiana. See how this works? Yes. There huh? we go. Uh, You're what doing we... a bang-up job with this call, sir. Uh, yeah, what else you got there, Jamie? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, Kev Slider, you know, he's spreading all over here in Lafayette. He's trying to get all the other people that work at Staples to get XM. He got me to get it. Awesome. And like I said, I've been a member since October. And, uh, that is yeah. so frustrating to us. You have no idea. I know. We were on a year before you uh, got involved. Yeah, I know. I wanted to get on earlier, but down here all we had was uh, Bob and Tom, unfortunately. Oh, they're terrific. <laughs> Not really. I mean, until I, I, mean, I thought they were okay until <laughs> I, I heard suck, you guys, you know. Sure. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, no problem. Take care, guys. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, I meant to go to John on Long Island, by the way, and I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> nice Oops. guy. Nice guy, Opie. <laughs> oh, hey, man. Well, I mean, this is a little more interesting, hopefully. Wrong number. John, what's up? How you doing, guys? All right. Um, we've been uh, on Pal Talk, I guess, from 2004, like when they first started coming out. And now on the, they have like this, we like to be watched room and uh, this by orgy room. My wife put a, my wife and I put a show on like almost every night. Like last night, we we had those instant messages popping up like left and right, and we're trying to tell them uh, we have no hands free, <laughs> and we can click on the mic, so it's easy to say that. But uh, we put on shows like every every. Uh, really, just straight fucking. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sucking, fucking everything, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Every night. The way, we, the way we became on XM was uh, Playboy had this whole sex, sex thing on the radio, on the television, and we won the XM radio through them. Wow, they won an XM, and then uh, you found us. That is very oh, cool. Oh, well, we've, I've been listening to you guys for, for years in the old station because we're from the same town. Ah. So, hey, so uh, why don't you go in one of the Opie and Anthony rooms and, and put on a show for everybody? We will do that tonight. I mean, right now I'm in the transit, so uh, no computer here. No, I know. I'm talking about uh, later tonight because this show never ends. It, there used to be a, a, a time when the Opie and Anthony show would just end. We would yeah. do our four hours, go home. Everyone would you know, shut down until the next day. Now it's like it just continues with pal talk and everything else. Yeah, there are plenty of other uh, things people do. Anthony supposedly does uh, shows on pal talk now. I just get on there and uh, hang out. You know, there are well, different rooms. Is your name like uh, public knowledge? Round. Yeah, yep. it's just O P A N T. Into couple. That's me. All right, John. That's what it is here uh, on the uh, 
on the Pal Talk. Uh, and if you don't have cam. a camera, uh, there's no need to even exist on Pal Talk. When it, someone without a camera that says hello, you're like, mm, can't see I you. I can't see you. Fuck off. Get away. Don't know bye you. Bye bye. All right, let's go to Ann in Minnesota. Ann? Hi, guys. Good uh, morning. Good morning. Oh, Patrice. Black Dr. Phil. I want to welcome you into my life. My husband followed me around the house with his laptop computer when you were on Pal Talk. Oh, okay. Followed you around yeah, the that house. Some, that, yeah, that was some great advice. <laughs> Wait, what happened? I want to know. I know. Uh, just, hold on, there's a story here. What happened? No, Ann? it was it was. Uh, I had I did the uh, the halfway Doc Black Phillips show when I got on, and I just it was like girls girls and guys going at it. Some guy named Carlton who's like pretty angry with bitches, and but he's pretty I good. Actually, Patrice, I was not angry with you. I was more pissed off because I don't know how you know all that shit. Like, I had to pretend like you didn't know what you were talking about. Right. But how do you know? Because <laughs> you just tap into nature. That's all, pumpkin. Oh, well. <laughs> you, tap into, you, tap into, you tap into fucking primitive instincts. I, I don't know why those women were so pissed off. I mean, I felt a little defensive myself. Wait, were you doing a, a preview? <laughs> I was relationship doing a preview show yeah, on by, Pal by mistake, but it's like, oh, I, okay. it, I just love, I just do it anyway, because as soon as it's like she's, rah, you know, barking out, yeah. I try to suck his dick. Like, like this is what this is this is the, the the feeling of I try to suck his dick and he don't want me to. Oh, really, sexy? <laughs> he says no to my dick sucking advances. <laughs> I think you're great. Keep I, it up. Oh, that's Thanks, very cool, man. I think your show is going to blow up on Saturday, man. Oh, so. Trace is doing a relationship show. I mean, it's twisted, uh, twisted advice for couples out there. But uh, it's going to be on Saturday night, eight to ten p.m. East Coast time. Patrice O'Neill and his relationship show. Why don't we take a quick break? I want to get another cup of coffee. All right. I need, apparently I have to appoint some people as admins in the uh, pal talk room. Also, I'm the only one. And I can't uh, bounce people because I can't really keep track. I got a show to do over here, and uh, it seems we have some Arab jackers in here again. Yes, my friend. For some reason, Opie, we uh, talked about Arab this. guys love coming in and jerking off in uh, various <laughs> rooms. It's a big thing. Pal talk. The Arab men love to jerk off to anything. They're looking at our camera and jerking off. Yes, my friend. Yeah, they're probably just imagining blowing it up. You Wait, know? to anything, no. Uh, to the Arabs, these women are completely naked. Well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, they show no, like a oh, shoulder. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is like complete nudity to oh, the Arabs. My friends. Look at that. Look at her forehead. Oh, oh my God. The cheeks. Eyebrows. The cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. I mean, eyebrows. <laughs> for some reason. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. These American uh, yeah. women are completely naked to the Arabs. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we get back, uh, Patrice O'Neill, he killed the Carolines, and uh, he, <laughs> we got to read this uh, hate email you got <laughs> oh, gee, from what? someone you threw oh, out yeah. or something. This girl is just fucking mad at me. Hates you. Hates my guts. And she loved me until I tossed her out. Yeah. And I sent her a reply just to let her know that, you know, I explained why you had to get tossed out, pumpkin. Mm -hmm. All right. You know. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we'll go to break uh, with this to make uh, that one listener very happy. We're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Patrice O'Neill sitting in for a little Jimmy Norton. Where's Jimmy? Where is he this week? Aspen, uh, Colorado, I Aspen. think. Oh, he's doing Aspen, though. He's doing the comedy festival in uh, Aspen. We were trying to broadcast from there, and that fell through. <laughs> they want us out and about, so we give them ideas, and yeah. And, uh, well... I, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I can't even get an XM radio from XM. And there's people, you know, my it's time to upgrade my family with the new units and stuff. Right. They still got the old, not, I was going to say crap, but it's 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 still working fine for them. But when you see all the, the latest radios that are you coming out. You want the new stuff. Yeah, so now I'm, i got to upgrade all, my entire family, and I come from a big family, right? So I can't get a lot of radios from Washington. So I go right to Ziggy. I'm like, fuck it. Ziggy, get me a radio. My brother Ziggy's needs upgrade. The source, yeah. So now I got to promote MyRadioStore.com. MyRadioStore.com for all your XM needs. Mm -hmm. They get pissed off in Washington when we do this, but tough shit. Hey. I mean, if you want to send me do. a box of really nice radios and MiFi so I can upgrade my entire family, then I won't have to do this. Because I'm not paying for radios if I work for the company. Yeah. So Ziggy, uh, Ziggy sent um, a couple radios to me, so uh, so I could upgrade the family. So I want to thank Ziggy. MyRadioStore.com, eight six six 
I need XM. And they got the pest gear. They got my brother's uh, T-shirts that are uh, selling like crazy. Hotcakes? I was going to say hotcakes. I saw that. And I stopped in mid-sentence because I'm that damn good. Hotcakes aren't selling that well. I, actually, my brother's got a brand new T-shirt for our St. Paddy's Day broadcast. And I like the thematic T-shirt thing for yeah. the uh, little events we do. And if uh, you're not going to the broadcast of the Hard Rock Cafe a week from Friday, you can still get a T-shirt by going to MyRadioStore.com, right? Mm -hmm. Ziggy and the gang are great over there. Thank you very, very much. Job well done. All right, let's say hi to uh, Erica in New Jersey. Erica. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hold, hold on a minute. Yes? We're going to get right back to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is why we fucking hate radio guys. Neil in Vegas, go ahead. Hey, uh, there's a, a radio station in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. They're giving away NASCAR tickets. Yeah. And they got like five guys that they selected through the week. And they're going to put their junk in a jar full of bees. First one to get stung wins. Are you shitting me? No. This and is another what, thing, too. This is what they radio is all about. And this is, you know... God. To a certain point, this is where I do agree with Howard Stern. It, this fucking business is filled with guys that are too lazy to come up with their own shit. And, and, now, it, and now at the Internet and these websites, all you have to do is go to see what all the, the hot radio shows are doing in America and go, whoa, hey, that's good. I'll do that one I'll from, pick that. from these I'll guys. Do this. I'll, I'll pick this one from these guys over here. It's shopping. Look, and, and the reality is some of these bits you like, you know, you, you sound like you're whining because you're like, oh, come on, anyone could have came up with that. But the bee sting bit is so fucking original, and no one came close to ever doing that bit before I we know. did it. And, and, and is it a coincidence only a month, month and a half later, someone else is doing it out yeah, there? Yeah, you can't go, hey, you know, I heard him talking about, uh, like, Jessica Simpson, and then I heard another show talking about Jessica Simpson. Like, that doesn't quite count. But something like the you know, bee sting thing. Uh, bee sting. Another, th uh, another thing they have is they have what's called a rock you line. It's kind of like your F you line. And wow. That and that was yeah. uh, an Opie and Anthony original, too. And that, that bit, you know, well, it's not it's an easy bit to come up with, but yeah. every freaking radio show in America is doing that as well. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And then you talk to these radio guys, and they'll go, hey, man, you know, it's just part of the business, you know? Yeah. That's how they explain it to their yeah. listeners and, and other radio guys. Yeah, people have been stealing from uh, radio guys uh, since the beginning. It's just, yeah. it's just how it is. No, right. I'm here to say it's, it sucks. It's so obvious they ripped it off from you. What's uh, what's the station? Ninety two point three K O M P. K O M P. Attack pass. Uh, Eric, here's the link for the station of Vegas steel and the be in a jar routine. I called them on it this morning, asking if they would give credit to ONA for the bit they are stealing, and their their response was that it was a uh, fifteen to twenty years. It was done fifteen to twenty years ago by a DJ in Chicago. Oh yeah. The contest is for this Friday, www.komp.com. Attack. That fucking blows. Attack. Oh, that's what that's what they do in radio, though. <sighs> Thanks, Neil. All right, bud. Uh, let's go to Erica in Jersey. Back to you, Erica. Hey, guys. What's going on? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Uh, Patrice, I was at your show Friday night, and you absolutely killed. It was hilarious, and when those girls walked out, it was about the funniest thing I've ever seen. All right, that's what we're gonna get, we're gonna get into here. <laughs> Patrice was at Caroline's. He killed once again. A lot of O and A fans there. Mm -hmm. A lot of Web Junk Twenty fans there. Yeah, from the VH1 Mix, show. Mixing, and that's yeah. not a good mix. No, no, no. Forty-five-year-old perverts and ten-year-old girls from Web Junk and the fifty-year-old psychopaths that listen to this show mixing together in a fucking comedy <laughs> club. Both, both not knowing me from comedy. One knowing me from Web Junk, the other right. Yeah, and I got the my comedy people because my comedy people come late mm -hmm. or they come on time. Uh, o and A's fucking sociopaths come ten hours early and get in the front. <laughs> Yeah. It's raining things. <laughs> Thank you, man. I, I, I've been doing comedy for a little while. Let me just do this. <laughs> and then you got the 10 year old girls who go, This is not, I don't, I like, this is not like web junk. I don't know. <laughs> so, they, so I had 16 year old, 10 16 year old girls coming in with the, um, with the someone's gonna get killed and murdered clothes on at my fucking show. And I'm like, Look, 
please go. I just yeah. I didn't ask him to I, get out because I'm not going to talk about anything that you know about. Because then what happens is it starts to break down and they start to go. I don't. This ain't funny. Then they have a conversation in themselves. And then one girl, I said, "Sweetie, your skirt. Everyone can see what your you think is an ass or whatever, and or some of your crotch. And it's like you know, some there's grown crazy human beings here. Why don't you leave?" She stands up and goes, "Let me tell you something, motherfucker. You know." And I said, "Do you see what I'm saying?" And then I get into the women thing, like I always can't yeah, stop. Yeah. And I and I go, you know, I could take you by the top of your head. And twist it left fast, and then twist it back right, and the rest of your body will still be going left, and your neck will break. And that's I, that's how you end up in a fucking crab basket in the bottom of the ocean in Aruba, cause your fucking mouth. <laughs> and they just got up and got crab horrified basket. and left. And I, and I was like, thank you for leaving. So 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 you don't I don't get in trouble for someone at this crowd, cause it was that type of show. It was a bunch of hairy fucking middle aged men just. <laughs> <laughs> and and excited, hey, Patrice. It's raining stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can you not r writing O and A rules on the bathroom stall? It, can you not fucking do that, please? Can you not fucking do that? Can you take your picture and move along? <laughs> <laughs> That's our listeners. We love them. That's them. Patrice, gonna get another one. They will show sure, no problem, man. They will now support. <laughs> they will now support whatever you do. Thanks. It's good and bad. <laughs> I appreciate it. You fucking. I, I was maniacs. telling Patrice in the office before the show because he was discussing this. I go, we drove Brian Regan to drink. Uh, Brian Regan is the cleanest comic you'll ever see. Yeah. And people love, love, love Brian Regan, right? So back at NEW, we were just so massively huge in the New York area. Brian Regan blew up on our show. He was already blown up in the comedy world, but then he blew up with our listeners. They had to add like a fourth show at Caroline's one night. He was doing a 7, an 8.30, a 10.45, and a, like a 12.15 show or something. And people were just yelling out his act the entire night where between shows he started doing shots with us. He was losing his mind because he couldn't control the crowd anymore. There was standing room only. The place was beyond packed. He's getting into these long-form bits, and all of a sudden, the big yellow one's the sun. And he's, and he's trying to be polite, like, I'll get to that. And then someone else is yelling another line from another bit, and they're yeah. all punchlines to his bits. And know? Regan's not a <laughs> crowd-worker <laughs> guy. You yeah, know? I, I like crowd work. I hand, It's very fun. To, I, talk, I make examples in Philly when, when I was on the show for like two weeks straight, and yeah. Philly was hack they came out yeah but every show i had to make us just a slight example example of some people you, right hey, hey man hey listen take your feet off the stage you know it'll be just one guy by himself yeah leaning and he actually gets on the stage to just what and goes that? and he starts whispering under his breath ah, it's cold out here <laughs> You're oh, right? no, and, I go, yeah. and I go, look, man, do me a favor. I, and I have to explain to the crowd, oh, listen, everybody, Jesus. there's a guy up here whispering things from the radio that I did. Now, I'm not going to throw you out because I like you, but I'm going to have you removed to the back of the room by yourself. You, you redistribute the crowd. You have to go back. You have to regulate these fucking psychos that come to your show. You know what? I You're agree. a smart man because Brian Regan was too polite and the crowd took over this uh, this time. This is this goes back a few years. It's different now. Like a fungus. But And there's Patri uh, There's uh, Brian Regan backstage like, hey, hey, you guys want to do a shot? And I'm like, what? I've known you for a couple of years now. I've never seen you touch alcohol, basically. You know? Yeah. And we're doing shots shots in between shows just so he could get through that night because it was just one of those crazy crazy nights and you love the love you, you love the fucking uh, uh, you love the love that it has mm -hmm. you have for the show yeah and, and you love the love they give you but it's like just just do you understand that I don't want you fucking yelling at me about radio shit so yeah. what am I supposed to start doing it's rain and stuff on the, and then there's there's a hundred people who go what, go, is, what he the doing? Fuck is he then doing then there's another hundred going what is it it's like they infest the show and sit in the fucking front and just <laughs> that's our listeners and, baby and then at some point they're not talking but they they have a face that no man should have for another man. <laughs> Just a big eye. We talk about smile. the face. <laughs> yeah, the face. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> and I go, don't be that happy to fucking see me. <laughs> My family talks the about the face when they see me on the mound. It's like, dude, what's up with that, man? Hey, dude. Do you have a gay audience? I'm like, no, they're just they guys the that face. love the show. And I think they feel like it's <clears throat> it, it, it's another phenomenon where it's not like they're, they're fans. 
Mm-hmm. They're not fans. They're like when guys call in, hey guys, it's never like, hey, hey, you know, long time listener, first time caller. Blah. It's all like, dude, listen to Channel 6. There's a guy talking about your mother. And you're like, hold on, let me watch. It's not, we're friends sort of thing. Right. Or we're enemies. It's like, I fucking hate you, Patrice. On a, I hate you, Patrice level. Not on a, I don't want to hear Patrice, I'm going to turn. But listen and hate you. <laughs> yeah. There was guys at the show, I said, why don't you four cocksuckers leave? Oh, they shit. wouldn't go. They wouldn't li- like. I was like, "What kind of fucking asshole are you?" They just hated me from the show, but they hated me enough to stay yeah, they, and, and to come out in the first place, and to come out to hate. Wow, it's brutal. That makes you, no sense. But you're regulating it. You learn how to deal with it. But I find my show. I start going into you know having diabetes and the whole thing. And, and you see some people buckling down, and then you, you know a couple of O and A guys will go. <sighs> Dude, what's he talking about? <laughs> Ramon! Uh, listen, uh, Ramon. can you not fucking do that? Or I'm going to have to have you fucking removed. It really, it, it's a fine line. I go to a lot of comedy shows, and sometimes the heckling is a lot of fun, and it brings, uh, like, an energy to the show. But then it's like, then it's, sometimes it's too much, and you get frustrated as just a guy sitting there wanting to watch, you know, a just, comedian. Just want to watch know, the show. Because you know he's going to get into some really, really cool things, but now he's getting distracted because this, and it's usually just someone that is just too fucking drunk, doesn't know that they're just just bombing for everybody else. And when yeah. you toss them, they got that look like, what, I just will heal, have a uh, good time, you fucking, fucking, fat fucking love. So you toss this woman. Oh, and, she, and her friends? All her friends. So what was four of them? Four of them. Out you go. And the reason was they they just weren't enjoying the show. No, they were over enjoying it. I've never kicked anybody out for having a great time. It, every time I, it's like they kept jumping on the timing, and they would they they started having a show amongst themselves. So they were going, yeah. yeah then, 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 then they would look at each other and go, and you hear what I said? You hear what I said? And, uh, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> and it was, you know, Caroline's is on Broadway, so a lot of people would, like, just come in because it's on Broadway. Yeah. So it's some fucking white lady, some some mixed couple from Sheboygan sitting around these frothing Long Island idiots with M&M coats <laughs> and some chick who's like cursing me out like she's a dude, you know, like So how do you how do you kick him out? Uh, easy. I go I this is what I do always. I say six times relax. Chill out, man. Let's let's do something, you know. Yeah. I go, "Okay. All right, listen. Um, but, but I, then I get eye contact with who was supposed to be throwing them out. Mm, and then as soon as the last straw comes, I go, oh, boy, should I throw these motherfuckers? Because you, here's the, the key to throwing people out. The crowd has to want those people to go. Uh-huh. You can't do it yourself because the crowd will go, this guy is a, is yeah. a dictator. He's a fucking dick. But you have to kick him out. Guy paid to get in. Exactly. This guy They'll turn him? on you. So you have to get to the point where the crowd's like, oh, come on. Yeah. And I go, hmm, yeah, I think I have to get rid of them. Don't throw them out. Yeah, get them out of here, please. Then they Thanks. like you. But, hey, listen, and I always go, I'll pay for their drink. It was a fight in Philly because the guy goes, I threw a guy, I go, um, Pay for his drinks, get him the fuck out. Because this is the guy that yelled out the joke. Hey, what do you call an Italian prostitute? In the mi- in the has nothing. <laughs> this is where you have to throw him out. When when me and you are talking about the price of oil, and yeah. if Opie comes in and goes, jeez, you go, listen, Opie, you have to go. So this, I mean, we're talking about something, and this guy goes, ah, you call. What's an Italian hooker? A pasta dude. A pasta dude. Oh, yo, yo. What so, awful so joke. I go uh, get him out yeah. and pay for his cl- his stuff that he drank. Yeah, sure. So his friends didn't leave. At the end of the show, they come up, and thank God Big Gab was there at the time. Oh, yeah, Cause yeah. Because Gab yeah. came up, you know, ready to blast no somebody in the head. fuck with him. So he goes, dude, you owe us money. To me. You owe us money because the guy you threw out, it was his birthday and he was paying for everybody. I said, I don't give a fuck. You should have left with him, you fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah. So we get into this fucking thing. He wants his money for the... And it's like, man, get out of here. But then it's like he's with... He's kind of... I'm intimidating, but I'm a fat dude. I'm a big fat dude, but Gavin is a 
is a is a tanker. Yeah, yeah. And when he came up with that giant head and giant neck, the guy goes, "Dude, I just wanted the dude." He did the, <laughs> he did the dude wiggle out dude thing. Isn't that great when you got friends like that that could just walk over and diffuse the situation and, with and their mere like size? And that looks like beat up his whole crew. Yeah, yeah. I look like I can beat up a whole crew. Maybe get one guy in a headlock. Gavin looks like he can dispense of three right. quickly. Like it's four, y'all, and you you got the biggest mouth. And Gavin goes blah 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 to three, dude. and this motherfucker's like, uh, uh, yeah, well. Uh, Gavin's intimidating when he smiles. He's just yeah. he's One just of those a guys. serious But anyway, let's get, let's get it so, back to this, man. Yep. Yeah, so so this is what I'm saying that throwing people out it is a technique that you sometimes you have to I hated to throw that girl cuz she she literally they were having a good time, but their good time was in in their own mind. Yeah, it was ruining other people's good time. Yeah, it was like yeah. she was a cancer, and I wrote her back to explain that she was a cancer. You had well, to be removed. You're, well, you're like the, a, a bad titty. We're getting to the email she sent uh, to your MySpace account. <laughs> so then when you threw them out, the whole crowd applauded. They were they were loving the fact that no, you got rid of them? No, because the show was very strange as it, as it was. It was a weird show. I was trying to How figure out. How awkward is that, though? You get thrown out of a club. You got to pick up your belongings. And maybe, maybe finish your drink real fast. <laughs> And it's everyone's like school. looking at you. Right. And they get thrown out to go to the principal's it was, office. It was just a mixture of, I, I'm learning this new mixture because it's people who aren't my fans. There's people who are fans of mine from one particular aspect, uh -huh. but not my comedy. So they come out, and I win new ones, but... Some of the ones that know me from the radio go, I don't like him. They don't bro. like, uh, I don't want to hear this shit. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Going to the hospital? Fucking shit. And then, um, and then uh, the web junk people are kids. So they come out and it's like, this is, he's not talking about ice cream flavors. This right. isn't web junk. So they come together and it's an ugly mix uh, and I have to regulate. Let's go to James on Long Island. James? Yo. Hey. What's up, man? What's up? Yo, what's the matter? This guy's mad because I was a little funnier than him or something? That's the Eminem guy. You That's idiot. Right. You wasn't a little funnier, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you was a bother. This is the guy and from Philly? You, 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 no. Is, is this the Philly guy or the Caroline's guy? I'm from Philly. What the hell? Yeah, this is the... Hey, do you hear him? This guy was at the show. Do you hear? This his, is the guy that was with the girl? Th yes, but that this may be out. the girl because she had the <laughs> same voice. They were just... Mm, girl, crazy? Listen to him. Listen to him. You gotta be fucking shit. So you kicked out a girl, a guy, and and they're two friends. Out you go. Oh, get okay. out. Get out. And you thought you deserved not to fucking leave. You thought you was helping the show. You thought you was being funny. You were being as annoying and show stopping <laughs> as you are right now. Out yeah. you fucking go. <laughs> you in that yellow M and M coat bothered me. Yo, you pick out the only people that were there to see you. But do you yeah, know so that the so fuck? So it, so do you know that the so fucking? Guy? You were the only people who were announcing that you knew me. <laughs> Go get him, baby. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. James, were you a little too obnoxious? Yes, he at was. At the Caroline show. Right, be honest. I wasn't too obnoxious, man. I was having a good time. He, be honest. Let me tell you something. Let me, let, dude, 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 let me, let me tell you something. Uh, there's a difference between, like, a rock concert and having a good time and a comedy club and having a good time. I've seen people, I've been to a lot of comedy clubs, seen a lot of comics. I know what having a good time is in a comedy club. It's sitting, watching the comics do their shit and laughing about it. Uh, it's not being louder than the comic, trying to make it your moment in front of the crowd where you get a line in and uh, the audience laughs and now you're the guy, the center of attention. I've seen the guy that wants to be the center of attention guy. And that ain't a fucking good time. It's a good time for you. It's not, it's not a good time for everybody else. It's a bad time for everyone else. <laughs> so if you are trying to be attention guy... Everyone yeah, wanted you to I wasn't out. trying to be attention guy. No, he wasn't. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you hear his fuck? Do you? Can, right. Does anybody believe he's not trying to be attention guy? And imagine this: his girl that wrote the letter, a thousand percent worse. Wow. Because at least he was extra. This guy, to be honest with you. I'm fucking with him because he was having a good time. I could have kind of got him to chill Worked out. With it, yeah. His girl, which is a girl thing. Was it your girl, James? It, no, it wasn't my girl. The girl that he was pissed off at ain't even the one that wrote the letter. The girl that wrote the letter was my sister, the little blonde <laughs> chick. Well, we got the letter, and that's her what name, we're getting to her here. Her name is Snatch on MySpace. 
<laughs> nice name. By, you got to give way, her that. It's Snatch. <laughs> I, I, I got to respect her for that. <laughs> snatch. I'm going to throw James on hold for a second. So um, Snatch wrote this fine email to Patrice O'Neill's MySpace account after she got thrown out of Caroline's with James, who's on the line here. Okay, Patrice, it starts. Okay, Patrice. You were funny and really good at making fun of other people, considering the size of your damn self. Already. First sentence. And, and make sure joke. this is Long Island voice in your head. Should we keep track of all the insults? Or mm. is it all fat jokes in this email? I haven't read the whole it's, thing yet. I, it's just go. That's right. I'm the blonde chick that was sitting front row at Caroline's last night. Yeah. You know, one of the people you had escorted out because we broke your concentration <laughs> and because we were funnier than you will ever be. Uh, all right, all right, all right. When, when some little blonde chick and and, and the the her, his her brother who sounds like this guy yeah. is talking about how much funnier they are than the uh, comic, um, I'm not really believing they were funny to the crowd there. <laughs> of course, they not. were funny to themselves. I bet. Of course, they were. Oh, they, they were having they were hilarious. They were having a great time and with laughing themselves. at themselves. Don't right. forget that they right. were laughing at themselves because they're funny to themselves. Right. Right. We were probably the only people there who had a fucking clue who the fuck you are. <laughs> All right, there's Just another you thing. Four. <laughs> Just them. Everyone else came there thinking, I don't know. I never heard his name sounds like someone I might want to see. Hey, let's go see a white woman, Patrice. <laughs> she she sounds funny. Patrice O'Neill, good old Irish chick. Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. Let's get in there. Wasn't she on the Golden Girls? Yeah. <laughs> she gets into that. We we weren't just going out for drinks at the comedy club. Oh, who's playing? Who gives a fuck? It'll be fun. No, no, we actually came to see you, and you know what you let me, and you know what, you let me down, and I'm going to let the whole fucking world know <laughs> what a piece of shit you really are, because you were scared of a bunch of white kids. White I was kids. horrified. Now the race to angle comes in. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm a phony, I was, they horrified me. The only thing, Patrice, the only white blonde girl Patrice would be afraid of is the one pointing finger and going, he's the guy that raped he's me. He's the, the rapist. <laughs> that is the only time a white girl is going to scare Patrice. Miss, you left your hair on my coat. Can you take that, yeah. please? Could Thank you take you it off? Right. I don't want it under my fingernail, so you grab it. You brushed against me on the train. Can you take you and your DNA? I walk around yeah. with Windex just to make sure my coat is clean. Patrice walks around with a CSI team just to make sure he's okay. No white woman Ooh, DNA on white. you. Wait, let me make sure no white woman spit on me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking Clorox. Uh, the first black person I have ever seen that was ever afraid of white people. Yeah. I well, hope you got I'll give some, her that. I hope you got some laughs out of the 50 year old ladies that were left to watch the rest of your lame ass show. Wow. Mm hmm. 50 year old ladies in there. Had a great time when you left them. Had a great time. And the women who it. walked out in like the first 10 minutes of you coming on was smart. Well, anyway. I just want to thank you because if we had stayed for the rest of the gay ass homo shit you call comedy, <laughs> you do gay ass homo shit yeah, now. Yeah, this gay ass homo shit. You know, I, I I'd love we, to see your gay ass homo shit set. <laughs> I haven't seen that one when I go to see Patrice. We would have missed our train, so for you kicking us out, we got the fuck out of New York City in time to catch our ride back. And then in capital letters, great fucking job, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> in capital letters. Exclamation point! See, I've never, I've had fist fights with less passion than that letter. Yeah, did, did she fucking and and she and the thing is, this this can turn back around. She can love me because if she realizes, because I wrote her back, and she has to realize that she was wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it had to go. She had to go. Yeah. Bye bye, baby. Mm, I don't want you to hate me, but you have to go. Mm -hmm. And if you come back ever again, which it's like the the, the pal talk thing, gotta bounce you. You're fucking up the vibe. You're, you're fucking up the vibe of the room. Yeah, same People thing. Are in a, too scared yeah. to tell you to shut up because they were. This guy is a is an ox. This dude for a, and a, a lot of big people listen to this fucking show. Yeah, just oh, yeah. an ox. This Noticed this that. kid's probably a handful. This James kid, big kid, puts on his NASCAR M and M coat and just walks out. But he innately knew he was a dick. But he just he wanted to stay. He was having a good time. But that girl was just. Awful. Yeah. Out right. you go. Well, here, uh, the email ends with this. I'll be talking to you on ONA soon. At least they respect their listeners. I'll be sure to let them know all about it. And if not, 
and you're the one to tell them first. I'll make sure I'm on the line to speak to you myself. Fuck off, asswipe. <laughs> asswipe. Asswipe. Fuck she off, asswipe. Me a fucking ass. What? You know what? You know what this letter totally reminds me of? She called me an ass. Asswipe. That's, wipe. That's you know a, what that's this a white thing, like? by the way. That, that is, that so is white. such a white insult. <laughs> what, mo what movie was Sarah Silverman in? At the beginning, she gets punched in the mouth. What what movie was that? Oh, it is classic. She she tools yeah, off on this guy in a parking lot and just curses him out, calling him a little cunt and shit like that. And and the guy comes up uh, like he's gonna get in a fight with uh, Savage Silverman's uh, boyfriend in the parking lot. Right. And he looks like they're squaring off because he goes shut your bitch up and shit like that. And he's looking at the guy and they look like they're squaring off. Well, this guy just turns around and punches Sarah Silverman right in the face. And that is the type of chick she seems like with this language. Fuck off, ass wife, oh, all that shit. What was the movie? Way of the Gun? Way of the Gun. Best opening just scene in the movie control. ever. And you can't control women when they're out of control in these no. comedy shows. Yeah. No. Because they, they go, no one better put their hands on me. And no one yep. love. And she was just Long Islandy, And it oh, was boy. just horrible. People think because they pay that they have carte blanche to do and anything. And I offered to pay for their drinks. Please, pay for their drinks go. and get them the fuck out it's of here. It's fun to a point, but then you got no one to shut up. That's, that's, that's yeah. what it comes I've, down to. I've seen shit blurted out from an audience that cracked the whole place up. It was good timing. The guy was funny. And I don't even like that shit because it's kind of upstaging and it's attention guy. And, and then he always seems, since he got the laugh, that he's going to top it so he can't shut the fuck up and keeps doing it. I think an audience should sit there and, and laugh if they think it's Dude, funny, not laugh if they don't, but at shut times the fuck up. At times it's so worth it. I went to see Bill Burr, Darnell. Mm -hmm. Is it Darnell? Da it's Darnell. Right Darnell. Right Darnell. And uh, Charlie. And Charlie Murphy, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it was Bill Burr killed. Darnell, or how do you say his name? Darnell. Darnell, Darnell right? Darnell, yeah. He killed. And then Charlie Murphy gets on stage. It was just when he was starting his stand-up after the you know the Dave Chappelle show blew up. Mm. He stunk on ice, and right. he was the headliner. And finally, a girl from the back of the room calls him out on it. Uh oh. And then he decides to go at it with the girl. And the girl upstaged him to the point where it made the whole night worthwhile. Because he wasn't getting anything done on the stage. Yeah. At that point, it was, it was a lot of fun to listen to a heckler. A lot of fun. I wish I could remember some of the lines she came up with. Well, but, it wasn't. But it the wasn't whole crowd was like, ah, oh, damn, did she just say <laughs> that? <laughs> and you could see Charlie Murphy just sweating it out like, oh, fuck, some, I have nothing some, to say some to Some hecklers that. are genius, but you work with them. Like, yeah, I, and, yeah. I'm not, I'm a, I can crowd work or you do material. I love either one. And if they had added anything except for sociopathic behavior, I'd have been like, yo, yeah. fine. And I was really with them until it was like, can you can you have a sense that I'm – do you have a sense that – I'm I'm getting a little. Can you, can you calm down? Yeah. And the girl he was with, it was the girls. It wasn't the guys. Right. The right, girls listen. were like, Bleh. listen, oh. we got the uh, the way of the gun clip that Anthony's talking about. Oh, I believe. wow, really? Hey, yeah, you get up. What are you retarded? Get off the fucking car. She's sitting hey, in the car. Hey, Nicholas, get off the fucking car. Hey, fuck suck. Get your slippery fucking ass off the car. Listen to me. Get off the fucking car with your fucking ass. Shut that cunt's mouth or I'll come over there and fuck start her head. <laughs> You're going to wish you head. never fucking got up this morning, asshole, because my boyfriend's going to fuck you up. And then after that, while he's fucking up your fucking gay uncle over there, I'm going to fucking cut off your cock and mail it to your mother, you fucking faggot bitch. Gay lord fucking bitch. How do you like that? You like that a lot? You fucking faggot? You like to ass fuck? Fontanella fucking baby? Head um, fuck? You like to fuck baby heads? You like to fuck boys? He's gonna fuck you in the ass. How do you like that? He's not even gay, but he'll do it. Just honey, to fuck. Honey, she's uh, she's got a big mouth, but she's not kidding. I'm gonna whip you silly, and I'm gonna fuck you stupid. You wanna do the man dance? First dance is yours. <laughs> and he hauls off and punches the guy's chick in the face. <laughs> it's fantastic. So James, oh my God. <laughs> that seems to be. Like snatch, and did you like hear, that chick? Yeah, where snatch. is snatch, James? We need snatch on the phone today. Did you did you hear what he did? How how it went down a little bit? Why he, he went? Oh boy, mm -hmm. because he has been in that situation. Yep. So because I said to her, listen, can you shut your face? And he and I look at him and he goes, oh dude, don't. He has to defend her fucking mouth yep. every single time they go out. That's why he's like, Yo, oh, oh, they man. want you on the phone. 
Hey, say, hey, James. One eight six six. Wow, one wow. Who you? Who's that? Yeah. I guess he's on the phone. Are, with, uh, are you on Snatch. the phone with Snatch, James? She's calling right now. She's at work. All right. All right. Everyone, please do not call the show right now. Yeah, don't be stupid. If you're trying to get, call the show right now, just hang up. So we can get Snatch on immediately. We need Snatch. <laughs> we need Snatch. We need the Snatch on the phone. We're Snatch. <laughs> We're looking for Snatch. We're looking for Snatch. We're looking for Snatch. <laughs> Come on, Snatch. We got Aaron. We got Darren. People calling when we beg People them not call. to call. Thanks. Yeah, I'm calling. What's up, man? Thanks. Let me ask Darren why he's calling. Darren. Yeah. Why are you calling the show? Uh, yeah, I'm, I was listening to the show, and I was hearing Patrice talking about how he's fat and out of shape and stuff like that. Yeah. Man, I got to tell you, I bounce the clubs in Manhattan, and I work with this guy named Leo, and he's like five foot eight, and he's kind of... All right, let's say hi to... Holy let's shit, say hi to just go bab babble, right. babble. Hello. Are you known as Snatch? Yes, I am. Here she is, Does it Patrice. sound like her? We just That's read your... Of course it does. You hear her with a deep in-and-out girl voice? And she's You're, like, yeah. You live in Karam, huh? It was a big, <laughs> big, night out, big night out in the city, was it? <laughs> I just woke up, man. Shut up. From where? <laughs> Where'd you live before? Shirley? No. Oh, that's not even fucking. Do you hear me? Fucking, where'd you live, Mastic? You know what's great about this? You finally get to talk to someone that is hiding behind their computer. Here they are. Here they are. They were so brave with their uh, email to Patrice. Now, Aaron. Here we go, Aaron. You you moved to Corum. I will say, Aaron. I live in Coram. I have lived in Coram all of my life. You sound it. Jesus. That's okay. I just want to let her know that out of any, I've had hate mail yeah. my entire career. Of course. This may rank up with the top three greatest hate mail. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Aaron. That's pretty good. Now, why would you write something so scathing, full of personal insults, <laughs> racial slurs? We'll call them an asswipe. That, that's asswipe. That's the one that hurts. Man. Uh, the capital letters, oh, great no. fucking job, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> and I wrote you back there, pumpkin. I hope you got that one. I know. I already got it. I already got it. <laughs> All right. Oh, you guys are getting a little relationship, relationship going. going. I like it. She was so going to turn her around, bro. She was, it was passion because she was yeah. just hurt. But it's like, sweet. Sweetie, I, I have to let you know, and evidently it wasn't this girl who wrote it, wasn't the girl who yeah. had them thrown out. Wow. I'm not her. I'm not her. Well, I'm where is she? Well, I think you guys should call her up. Where is she? He's at He's home right sitting now. home right now listening. Do you know her? Yeah. Or because sometimes you just get sat next to some people at comedy clubs and they're assholes and you got to turn around and eat your own. You got to turn around they, to the table and go, look, shut the fuck up. They were together. Well, it was all us. But, but the ones on the left weren't. It, it was just that one girl who, who I don't, who, whoever she is, but the dude, the dude here, James, he had to get up and like, he had to defend her honor. And I'm yeah. like, dude, you don't have to do this. And then I said, you know what? Matter of fact, <laughs> if I'm lying. You, let me know. I said, sweetie, you go. Now, yeah, you three can no, stay. Wait a minute. You you three can stay, but this bitch got to get the fuck out. Yo, she is a really cool chick. You have no clue. She just got out of the army, okay? Exactly. Oh, and, and when I wrote, you must have just got... I thought I was writing the other one, and not, I thought Snatch was the other one. I wrote, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with you. Maybe it was your birthday, or you just got a women's prison. Ah, uh, same thing. But it's it's fucking the army. Yeah, some kind of institutionalized right, let's, living. Let's let Aaron talk a little bit here. So, Aaron. What's up? Are you still pissed off at Patrice O'Neal? Yo, I'm just mad that they kicked us out for no reason. They could have at least just moved us so we were out of his face or something. But How? Why did? Why couldn't you just sit and enjoy the show? That's what I never understand. We would, we were having a good time until he kicked us <laughs> out. Wait, no, no. It, your good time was interfering with the rest of the club's good time. And how many beers did you have on the Long Island Railroad on the way in? Yeah, any drinking on the uh, train? Up you. <laughs> no, I, I used to do that all the question. time. We used and to go into concerts. Long Island at, guys, we'd go to Madison Square Garden for the concerts, and you get fucked up before you even got to the show. Absolutely. It's a long ride on the Long Island Railroad. That's all right. Wait, what's Coram, the Port Jeff line? 
Yes. Yeah, oh, of no, course it is. Line. Oh, Ronkonkoma. Oh, my God. Even better. This is such a white trash conversation. Well, it makes me sick. Dude. I, I, <laughs> I really didn't want you them to go. It trash? had to go. Dude, they, they were on the White Trash Express. Yeah, the white trash. that's the White Trash Express, the Ronkonkoma line. <laughs> Ronkonkoma, Ronkonkoma. <laughs> With NASCAR sponsors on the side of the train. <laughs> Home of the daytime strip clubs. <laughs> A picture of Jeff Gordon on the <laughs> bunch of eights and threes. Uh, I, Lots really, of eights and threes. Listen, I, I really hated to do that because they were having a good time, but it was just All right. they had to go. Ron Conk, I love the people that decide uh, the five mile drive to the ocean's too far. I'm gonna bathe in this fucking polluted lake. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, All right, man. wait, we got another one of the girls. James, I'm going to throw oh, you cool. on hold. Uh, here's the gangster right here. This is it right here. Ann. Hello. Were you the one that was acting up at uh, Patrice's show? Yep, and I ate white trash. Actually, I'm from Brooklyn, so that's where you get the dude from in me. Oh, she walked out. Oh, I've never shit. seen Shola's shit. Thought, she I had a Tyson walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> she sucks, man. Wait, let Ann talk. Go ahead, go ahead Ann. Yeah, so uh, you kicked us out. You could have told us to be quiet, you know. You know, you didn't say nothing. You say, ha ha, he's on drugs. He's okay. She's being disruptive. Get her out of here. She's weird. All right. What's, what's with that? I didn't tell you to shut up 85 times, Ann. No, you didn't. Oh. Well, how many, 84? What, what, you didn't tell us to shut up one. one. I what said, you talking about raping the chick or Botox in the Chinese <laughs> 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 So you were paying attention up until the mescaline kicked in. At some point, did you not think, did you for a minute <laughs> just no, think no, of no, not no. yourself and understand that you had to go? There's no. nothing in you that thought you had to leave? No, not even a little bit. You know, if, if, you, if you told me to be quiet, I would understand. Even but, if you would have told me that you were, I was looking at you funny. I would have But I've, I've I would been to a lot of Patrice's shows. If someone's fucking with him, he will say, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Shut up. He but doesn't. He doesn't though. just kick people out first I, thing. I, I don't. He didn't say anything. I have never seen Patrice just go uh, out of nowhere. Because wouldn't the crowd be a little confused if Patrice just started like throwing people? Hey, you, throw them out. When they left, yeah, the I, show I, I, changed I, for the better. But I'm gonna tell you right now because I don't want to get back and forth with these sociopaths. I'll give him another chance. Next time I'm in, you, you will fr shut up. The <laughs> next time you come, I'm gonna give you free tickets, complete. Complete, uh, what you call it? Comp. Comp. Complete. Free drinks, free food, on me, free free entrance. Wow, look at this. And, and seriously, you don't need it. because... You can afford it. Wow. All right, listen, who's Chris? Do, do you Here hear? you go. Now, Patrice, do you hear I am how hearing how three of them are like, okay, and there's one asshole named Ann Hold that on. won't go because she got pride, you fucking idiot. Hold on, we got the fourth person now that was at the show. <coughs> Were you guys at the show with Chris? No, I don't remember no Chris. Oh, no. he's, he's from Quorum, though. He's a dick. He right, hold on. This is another... Hold on. Chris from Quorum's on the phone. Chris. Uh, it's Chris from Quorum. No, I wasn't at the show. All right. Uh, but, you know... Defending uh, Quorum? My, yeah, my knee-jerk reaction was to get pissed because you said Quorum was white trash. But let me explain something to you. Quorum has a very large black population called Gordon Heights. Quorum has a very large Street. black population. Yeah, Gordon Heights. They make it sound all fancy <laughs> schmancy. <laughs> I'm from Gordon Heights. Who gives a shit? When you look in the real estate section, it says Quorum North, so that people know it ain't Gordon Heights. Okay, you made your point, Quorum, you know, okay. They turn on each other. Yeah. Fucking real estate agents going at it. All right, Chris, anything else? No, that's it, boys. Have a good one. All right. He's defending Quorum, I guess. All right. I don't even know so what So now we got Ann and Ern back on the line. So you're going to give him uh, uh So you guys are going to go to the next Patrice O'Neill show? Yo, I'll go as long as he doesn't go and kick me out again, man. That's, that that's so fine. Long. Just don't. Or, or at least this time for a reasonable reason. Yeah, don't. <laughs> we should have them come into the studio and heckle us just, while you're on the uh, radio show. Just stop you know, heckling. We, just have them in the corner drinking and see. We ought to do like that to like. see what it's like. And see, because uh, I agree uh, with Patrice here. If we, sat, if we sat you in the studio and told you, look, just watch the show, enjoy yourself, maybe gave him a couple of drinks and, and <laughs> saw what happened and I had it live on the air, I think we would have a better understanding. <laughs> Like, we'd be trying to I do our show and just, dude, what the fuck, man? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 All right, let's hear from Ann before we get out of here. Ann? Yeah. Ann? What's up? Anything else you want to add to this? 
Uh, no, he, uh, he was a good comedian. I'm not going to knock him. I watched him on TV, seen him on Comedy Central. He's mm -hmm. a good comedian. But that night, he just kicked us out, and we were obviously disruptive, apparently. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. Was the Eminem Coke well, guy... Make a second opinion, right? Is the you Eminem... don't go to one doctor, right? You go to two. You need two opinions, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. The We're the other doctors. Well, here's the Eminem guy, James. James? Yo. All right. Is that your girlfriend? That ain't my girlfriend. I like to give her something. <laughs> yeah. she, she ain't bad. A little army girl, you know, she's fucking been stuck. Yeah, she's the only one that like to give her something. Good luck with that, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, sir. oh, it's like that, no one. And she did walk mm -hmm. like a fuck the middleweight champ. She, she did. Oh, army check. You she's know. like, I'll fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and you like girls? Yes, I do. I love them. Yeah. I mean, uh, you'd rather and be I with... I'm a straight lesbian, so don't say nothing, Patrice. I do like males. You're a little both, whatever, huh? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I don't look butch or like a dyke, none of that. Well, tell Snatch and all you guys, listen, man, you had to go that night, but listen, next time, make sure it's easy to get in touch with the show. Anytime I'm in New York, you guys, I'll, I'll get in free, and we'll try to reestablish our relationship, all right? Yes, like, like, yes, like all right. friends. All right, and your final, uh, final words here. He's good. Go see him. He's fucking great. Yeah, but, I right. think we'll patch things. Up. All right, there you go. There goes Dan. Dan. There goes Take it easy. And the bye, uh, James. Yeah. Anything else? Yo, when Patrice is back out in the city, I will be there. Hey, J guaranteed. Hey, James. What's up? Quickly, uh, what town are you from? Uh, yo, I live in the Heights, bro. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> in the Heights. I'm the only white. But he's with the, the brothers. <laughs> Can I say one more thing? Yeah. I was on an hour and ten minutes before I threw them out. I did yeah. two wow. hours. Wow, all right. So, so, so these guys got a whole show. <laughs> I did two shows that night. The first show, when they threw them out, and then the show I had to do after they, they got left. kicked out when the red light came on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Holy shit, we're all handing right. out checks. Yeah. So, James, you got a show out of it. Yeah. Definitely. All right, James. All right, yo, I'll see you guys at the Hard Rock on St. Oh, Patrick's Day. All right. All right, James. Oh, man. Bring everybody. You guys bring the whole L.I. posse with bring you, bro. Bring snatch. I want Corum. I want Shirley. I want Mastic Beach. I want Bay Shore. I want them all Bay Shore representing yeah. the White Trash Express to the Hard Rock Cafe a week from Friday. I want Patchog. <laughs> Corum in the house, bitch. That's right. All right, James. Thank you. Easy, bro. I kind of like that James guy. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, you take a Convoy down 347. Uh, <laughs> finally, you. You were the My one that highway. You were the one that wrote the hate email to Patrice O'Neill. I am. Anything That's else? Great. No. Not really. I I said what I had to say in my letter. I was pissed. It was the day after for being kicked out for no reason. All right. So uh, that, that's it, man. I'll, I'll go back and see him. I'll give him another shot. You know, maybe this time I'll sit far away, and maybe he won't hear my comments so much. Well, yeah, maybe uh, yeah. you'll enjoy the... the uh, but you don't that know. piece of shit. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll try not to drink so much before we go. Yeah, where is the ass white playing next? <laughs> <laughs> and be honest, you were you were you were drinking on the train, right? Oh yeah. Patrice yeah. is feeling good about his career it. these days. Webshock Twenty is blowing oh. up. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's oh that that weekend brought me right back down. Right to back to reality. Life stinks. <laughs> hey, <ass> planet. <laughs> what were you drinking? Beers, wine coolers. What was on the train? Heineken. Heineken. Heineken's on the train. Yeah, kid. Wonderful. A little Jaeger dad. Were you walking between cars and throwing the bottles out on the tracks? <laughs> Black golds for the boys and girls. <laughs> all right, Aaron, you're all right. Oh, thanks, man. It all right. Good talking to you guys. Definitely. Thanks for all sticking right. up for us, by the way. <laughs> No Opie and Anthony would never do this to us. <laughs> That's so funny. They would never do that to their fans. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, Aaron. She just really tried to destroy my life. Good one, guys. All right. I can't tell you how many times I d took, you know, I, I never interrupted a comedy show and stuff, but I have been drinking like a motherfucker on the Huntington branch of the L.I. Uh, Railroad. Just with just like this, with my fucking Long Island loud friends, just drinking, going out to the big city uh, to was... do something, and just being an asshole. You guys, but you guys are ridiculously shy in public. It's nothing worse. It's you are the opposite of the fans. Like when, remember Norton's uh, roast, yeah, and you guys were there. It was like yo, it was off, off the radio for a little. For yeah, minute, yeah. People still were you know loving you, and it's like, hey man, Opie and Anthony, you guys stood up with that fucking turtle yeah. in the shell thing the and. Little... Hey, and hey, and, and the fans are like, <laughs> and you're like, hi everyone, it's me Gregory, it's me Anthony, hi. <laughs> it, just, it wasn't that we were shy, we were beat up pretty bad at that point. 
Oh, yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, we were beat up pretty bad. But yeah, there was we times y'all used to we come out all the time. So we, weren't, we were humble. Yeah, we weren't feeling too good about ourselves uh, <laughs> during that yeah. time. We give a little wave, a little humble. <laughs> but but those, those Long Island Railroad trips into the city to go see whatever the big band Going was. Going to see the Who tonight. Right. And then the, the ride home, you're so tired and drunk and hung over. Everyone's you're... drunk at Penn Station because they're all going back to Long Island. So you're at the waiting for the train uh, track number to pop up, which they do two seconds before the train leaves. So it's just a bunch of drunk people hanging out in Penn Station waiting to get back to Long Island. Right. And then you hear oh. the, uh, the beer bottles rolling down, <laughs> just rolling around the cars. As they you're smell like home. vomit and beer, oh, the cars. When the, when the train stops at all the stations, it's like a wave of vomit and beer and piss washes forward uh, and oh. then comes back when the train Jesus starts up man. again. you got to lift your hey, feet up. Now we got Dan. He's a black guy. He's, he's sticking up for quorum. Dan, what's up? Nah, I'm not a black guy. I'm just letting you guys know. I do building inspections oh, I'm sorry. in that area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, let me tell you, that white trash town, I, the black people are the upper class. I, everybody <laughs> I go He's saying the white town. people are lower class than the black people <laughs> in uh, the Heights. And Dan's very uh, yeah. surprised at that, uh, that that would actually happen. Work. Huh? White guys are doing squeegee work on the side of the road. It's pretty. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, hit the guy on top talk. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. Let's go to Bobby in Jersey. Bobby. No, hey, actually, hey. I don't. Actually, I don't want to go to you. I'm sorry. Let's go to Chris on Long Island. The only reason Bobby, we we're trying to move on. Yeah, he, he was. He was going to say that he was at Patrice o, uh, O'Neill's show. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to blow you off like that, Bobby. I meant to go to Chris. Chris. Yo, what's up? Hey. Yeah, I just want to talk about the L I double R going into concerts in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Oh man. How bad would it be with like a train load of Iron Maiden priest fans yeah. all going into Madison Square Garden all at the same time? It all depended on who was playing. You're right. It was like one of the hard rock heavy metal shows would just be like crazy. And then I remember once I had to take the train in with uh my girlfriend uh uh Helen who was a big Jackson Brown fan. You went so out with a girl named Helen? Helen, yeah. Uh, oh, I know, please. How old are you? It was, no, it was awful. And uh, we went in to see Jackson Brown. And uh, it, the the crowd on that train, a little different than when you were going to see, like, The Who yeah. or something like that. It was just, uh, it was a bunch of chicks and their boyfriends that didn't want to be there. Like, you, it was very quiet. You're giving these little fleeting glances at other guys and rolling the eyes and go, yeah, fucking yeah, Jackson I Brown. Got, <laughs> I got stuck doing this, too. Suckered into this. I used to hate coming in to see the Islanders and the Rangers at the Garden, and yeah. you'd be on the train with just all Ranger fans in their jerseys. Yeah, there you go. That's oh, another one. Shit, man. You're going man. into the uh, Ranger Islander games, yeah. man. Oof. That was really brutal. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, take care. Yeah, why don't we move on? we got to take a break here. Patrice Alrighty. O'Neill just killing uh, this morning for us. On the way, we got news teases, Anthony. Oh, new batch of news teases. Good. Also, we got to get night. to the John Montone thing. John Montone. We also have to do... Uh, oh, the Trump stuff's pretty good, too. Yeah, Trump's lost his mind, or... Uh, that's kind of a hot story. It's a very hot story. <laughs> we'll get into that next. Wednesday. Get those wow stickers on the cars and the trucks. There are ladies out there that will flash you if they see the wow. Right. How's your uh, website? You, you you wound up getting patriceoneal.com, right? Yeah, I, I got I it. You guys convinced me to. Yeah, you got to get your name. Control my Kind of smart. Got to get your name. Hey, uh, by the way, what were we looking at? Oh, we, we wow. uh, held it up to Pal Talk, and the, the looks on some of the faces were horrific. Well, the National People Enquirer. were trying to figure out what the hell we were showing them. <laughs> the National Enquirer, which used to be uh, like a joke, and no one ever believed. Remember when no one believed what was in this these papers? Uh they now were like, they're like Men in Black, the Men in Black go. <laughs> yeah, the Men in Black, <laughs> the alien abduction, and it's like, this is where we get our news. Yeah. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. This now is uh, the paper that uh, only tells the truth about celebrities. Like, uh, you, won't, you won't see anything printed badly about celebrities for the most part. But now uh, the Inquirer is, is the truth. And they have got a section in here on this uh, issue where it's celebrities looking bad. Extreme celebrity flaws. That's what it's called. And it's <laughs> oh, just man. its horrid pictures of, of celebrities, and they're showing their faults. Oof. Courtney Cox and her Dumbo ears. 
Uh, Lindsay Lohan, this picture's been on the web, making the web. Uh, it's her with her back slightly turned, looking very bony and anorexic. And uh, she's got a hairy back. She's got a, lot of a hairy freckles. back. Yeah, a lot of hair, a lot of freckles, and the side of her titty is showing. They got uh, Angelina Jolie just walking down the street. There's you nothing wrong with weird. Angelina Jolie. There is something horrible. You would wrong. never think anything bad. She's just walking down the street. What could they find? Well, they have an extreme close-up of her hand, <laughs> and and there's veins. Let me see. Now, when you're walking with your hands down. <laughs> you know, your veins are going to pop out a little. Wait, but they, the caption is bony fingers. <laughs> bony fingers, veiny hands. And they do look like she was just like washes a hand in, uh, uh, in yeah. uh, formaldehyde. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the captions are great. Is she aud auditioning for an E.T. sequel? Those fingers are way creepy. <laughs> Ouch. Way creepy. They're not that bad. No. They're horrendous. I mean, if it's they have to, bad. like, get a, a extreme focus on her hand to find something wrong with her, I think she's doing okay. It's well, the yeah. corpse bride. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got If it's there? celebrity flaws issue, you got to have big celebrities mm -hmm. like Angelina. So they find anything they can. Uh, Star Jones. They have her, uh, oh. since she lost so much weight, they have her with this sweeping neckline on a, a dress she's wearing. And it says, Star Jones, next time, Droopy, please wear a bra. But they show her tits? They show her tits. It They could be the worst tits ever. They, they are, are completely flattened out. Completely flat. And they're, they're laying on what I guess used to be her gut. And now that she's lost some weight, they, now they're just flapped down flat. But where her cleavage should be... Because there's such flapjacky things, there's like a cut, there's a line, uh, almost like a scar, stretch mark, cut thing going on. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know. It is so heinous. And she's smiling, just showing this. And how about the no lovely problem. Katie Holmes? Yeah, we talked about Katie Holmes. Holmes. Uh, she gets the swamp, uh, the swamp mouth there. Oh As God. Mrs. Swamp Tom lip. Cruise, she shouldn't have scabby lips. Oh, and there they are, scabby lips. They have uh, Rosie O'Donnell with some uh, complexion issues. Uh, Halle Berry, a huge picture of her head uh, in close-up as she's talking with a booger. Up her nose. That's sexy. Just they did no. It is so heinous to look at. Let look at the, the Halle booger. Berry booger. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, Halley's oh, booger. The Halley oh, booger. Oh, that's <laughs> Halley's. That's Halley booger. Uh, Flaking. Man. Then they have bad hair section where they got Sybil Shepherd with curlers in her hair, looking like she's chasing kids off her lawn. Uh, Prince William going bald. Uh, Gwen Stefani with her blue like pixie hair, but that's you know she can walk around like that. She's Gwen Stefani. Ted Danson completely bald. Then John Travolta. Wait, Prince William. Going bald? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Prince William's got like a horseshoe thing going on. Oh, he got that uh, peninsula. This guy's father was like bald at 15. Oh, damn. That is a curse for a good looking white that's, kid. That's done in a yeah, year. Yeah, the Prince William so, hair is really what, 20 horseshoe. Years old, 21 yeah. years old? He's what a young guy. Uh, then John Travolta. Now, he said at the Oscars his head looked a little weird, like they had just packed hair on there, like a chia hair kind of thing. And they have an ultra close up of his hairline by his temple, and you can see gauze blended in to the color of his skin with makeup and hair put into that. So he's obviously got some kind of hair system, like a hair club look, type look system. Too. Yeah, look at that right there. They have a, uh, one picture of him further away and then the close-up. Get the fuck out. Dude, it's like makeup colored gauze This is over unbelievable that they would They do are this. exposing all the these motherfuckers. The special you got big eyes issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we rarely promote this shit, but you got to pick this one up. This is pretty damn good. This is a good one. And then you got the uh, the ultimate. Are you to the ultimate picture? Uh, that was the picture we showed pal yeah. talk and they were creeped out i didn't even look at this this is a bunch of chicks without makeup on yeah so they're showing that some of them uh like uh, uh jessica simpson they show her with makeup with the big doe eyes and everything and that's fine and then without makeup she just looks like you know fresh-faced girl look at, what's the problem look at look at uh, uh lopez look at j-lo yeah j-lo uh needs a little eye makeup there why wow. definitely does look she's kind of that's Jenny from the block. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jenny from the block. Right there. That's Cher. Jenny from the stoop. Um, <laughs> Beyonce. It's just all of them without their makeup on. And then uh, on the back page, we got Fergie from Black Eyed Peas, and she seems to have uh, uh, peed herself. 
Yeah, they've discussed that one on VH1 on one of those clip shows. <laughs> yeah, one, of those, one, of, one, one of those fucking, fucking clip shows on VH1. Know. Web something. There's one called Sub. Web Junk 10, hosted by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah, she's it's like, pretty obvious that she pissed her pants. She peed herself. Probably had to take a leak in the middle of the show and was like, you know what? Who's going to notice? Sexy. John Stamos on the cell phone hawking a huge loogie out of his mouth. Oh, my God. They got a mid loogie. It's amazing that these photographers I are he, I amazing. I thought he was eating spaghetti. Yeah, that's what it looks like. He's Wait, sucking up a big piece of the pasta. Photog the, uh, the photographers aren't amazing. They are. No, because they just go to catch a guy. <laughs> They're pretty much running, doing film with a camera. But that's, yeah, that's artistic. True. They get a hundred of those uh, pictures and go, all right, well, all right, well, I'll use this one. That's an artistic thing to that's catch, an a, take a, catch a Louis that long. Yeah, that that out. Yeah. They, they take a hundred pictures within a second. Paint taking a piss. This is like, what happened to the Clark Gable days and, you know, the old... Uh, Bet, uh, uh, Betty Davis stay. You never got pictures of that. I got a vomit behind the dumpster. You know, and there's a photographer. It was always glamorous. Like they treated him like royalty. A picture of Kevin Hepburn shitting in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> It was like they treated him like royalty. And here comes Clark Abel down the red carpet. Let's get a uh, word from you. Clark, what do you feel about your new normal motion picture? Well, it's going to be great, and I uh, think uh, everyone should go out and see it. Uh, it wasn't him, like, fucking taking a leak outside of the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Yeah, uh, they left him alone back They then. left him alone. Now it's, you know, J John Stamos spitting. Here's Keanu Reeves vomiting outside the door of a car. Power vomiting. Just power booting. Outside of uh, the door of his car. There's very good volume in that. Yeah, and then uh, they finished off with Clint Eastwood. Oh, man. Uh, b b he he's in his swim trunks that are, like, pulled up to a mid-gut. Uh, he's just... He, how old is this guy now? He has to be 75. Yeah, yeah. I would he say has 75. To be. His, his left leg seems to be a normal elderly gentleman's leg. His right leg is an elephant man leg. It's it's really scary. There are things going on. I guess it's exploded varicose veins that are just squirming their way and building up lumps and bumps. It's like a relief map of uh, of uh, Mars or something. I think he's got worms living in his leg. It looks like there's worms under there, right? Just trying to... They're digging their way out. There is a worm. It's a, like across oh. his kneecap is a python. Yeah, look there at is that. something going on there where he's got some uh, some issues... Clint is 75. Good job. 75. And then they got Pink. What's she doing? Taking a leak? Mm -hmm. Well, you know Just what? pulling her skirt up and pissing. Let E-Rock... Yes, Catherine Hepburn e taking a leak. E-Rock, show the camera all the <laughs> all the good ones. We'll show uh, the Pal Talk camera all the good ones. <laughs> Catherine Hepburn As we continue with the show. Just in case you don't feel like going to the uh, newsstand again. Let's take a look. Joan Crawford has the crabs. Joan, <laughs> can we get a picture of your crabs? <laughs> this is wonderful. Look here as Cary Grant vomits outside the Brown Derby, where he has just had the sirloin steak. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Humphrey Bogart? You got a picture of him? Now getting out of his limousine is Humphrey Bogart with the beautiful Lauren McCall. Oh, pussy shot. Look as she gets out, we're looking up a skirt. Wow, that's a lot of hair. Hanging out with the nigga that played the piano in Casablanca. What? Mm. Shave it again, Lauren. <laughs> well, someone must have hair plugs. Uh, <laughs> they treated him like royalty back then. Can you believe it? was that? always you about, you know, how baby. about a few words for uh, our listeners out there? It's wonderful. I hope you see my motion picture. There you have it, folks. And people were satisfied. And the now they want fucking... <laughs> and the clicking camera, you can hear clicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exploding flash bulbs. That's all they cared about. Lauren McCall, look at her droopy tits. Let's get the camera down there. We'll give her flash burns as we try to zoom in on these primitive cameras. <laughs> flash burns. Yeah, she's got all these stars going home with flash burns on their tits from their uh, block of wood with gunpowder powder on it. Uh, <laughs> you fucking Betty Davis. Here she comes. Snatch. That's <laughs> hilarious, man. Oh, man. I... Look at the cottage cheese ass on Betty Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she sat in a gravel driveway for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. Uh, look at the, the boogie hanging out of Mary Pickford's. <laughs> Mary Pickford, America's sweetheart. <laughs> 
<laughs> has a big load of snot coming out her nose, and we have the exclusive pictures. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and walking down the carpet is Charlie Chaplin. Look at that. Maybe Lauren Bacall should take a lesson from his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you putting a Halle Berry booger up on there? Yeah, we're just really rude, man. We're just showing the pictures on Pal Talk for fucking royal. They, they back, really man. never had fucking controversy back then. No. Like, you didn't know Rock Hudson was gay until until he had, he was dead from AIDS. Until it was over. Then that was it. They said that uh, the press knew about JFK banging women in the White House, but they yep. just left it alone. They left but, all that alone. But that's when they would kill you. Like, yeah. that's what kills me now. It's like people come out and fuck with the president. I, I, it's, it makes me nervous sometimes you come out and fucking talk about the president. Yeah. Back in the day, man, you used to wind up dead, man. Marilyn yeah. Monroe and the, the bitches just show up dead. Yeah, they well, just show up dead. With pills, with pills glued to their hand and a fucking An some kind of suicide note with the, with the <laughs> pen shoved in the head. I hated it. I couldn't live with my guilt with a pen shoved in the head with the note. Her, her, her own name spelled wrong. <laughs> but there you go. See, we got proof. <laughs> she, uh, she killed herself. She killed herself. And now, you know, people don't care. There was no CSI shit back then. Is that Marilyn no one cares. Is that Marilyn Monroe in the bag? I don't know. And they just zip her face. Uh, face. Zip back zip, up. Yep, that's, that's her. That's her. That's her. <laughs> Tragic news out of Hollywood as Marilyn Monroe was found dead from a drug overdose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking with a man here off camera with a gun to my head. <laughs> That's back when motherfuckers used to die. Yeah. We yeah. still don't know who killed the president. That motherfuckers nope. would kill you if you, saw, if you fucking talked. You. That's when it was like people think it is now with the government conspiracies and shit. That's when it was going on. Now, there's too much openness. There's too much for us to look into. The second someone tries some secret society crap, uh, people know it's on the web. Some friggin' 14-year-old has a blog written about it, yeah. and it goes out all over the place. But back then, all right, we're going to keep this one quiet. Who, who, who tonight? Imagine the room where they sit there and decide, all right, Marilyn Monroe's got to be killed. Like, who's the group of guys that go, all right, who is it tonight, guys? Um... You know Marilyn Monroe? Yeah, we gotta kill her. She fucked the president. She, she fucked the blood. president. You know, you know, you know the deal, right? Yeah, we know the deal. Oh, she's she... telling everybody about it. Bunch but... of lucky strikes and <laughs> yeah. ashtrays. Wait a minute! And when they found her in the bed, she was perfectly posed as a yeah. woman that killed herself. Posed. One arm up, her the other one like her hand over her forehead, <laughs> like she was in distress. Oh, woe is me! Oh, pose. oh. <laughs> found a nude in dramatic pose in her bed. <laughs> That room, though, must have just been something. Marilyn Monroe drowned in the Sahara Desert. Drowned in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, but it's water in the lungs. I don't know what the fuck. Water in the lungs. <laughs> they had to go, the government had to go build a pool real quick to throw in. <laughs> Send out the pool team. <laughs> X-11 pool team. In the middle of the desert, there's a fucking pool with her at the bottom. <laughs> fucking name, man. <laughs> uh, all right. That was the good old days, man. The good old days. Day. Well, E-Rock showing the pictures from the Enquirer. There's uh, Fergie wedding with herself. The, with all the flaws of the uh, current right. celebrities. Here's Catherine Hepburn pissing herself. <laughs> she was going out with uh, like, with Spencer Tracy, and they kind of kept it quiet. That was in uh, The Aviator, part of the uh, uh, yeah. the movie. And uh, they, you know, they kept shit like that quiet. Sometimes they'd threaten people or pay them off or whatever, but they would... Uh, they would but the government was in deep control of Hollywood back then. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, they were in deep control. That's what happened with the um, what, what was what was the thing with the the communism? McCarthy, um, yeah, the McCarthy. McCarthy thing. Yeah, how that got started was it, it was genius. How they the government freaked it. It was JFK's dad who used to be the 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 big uh, the yeah, ambassador. Joe, Joe Kennedy. The Joe Kennedy used to be an ambassador over there, and he set the Jews up sweet because you know. Fucking Thomas Edison was a big time racist, uh -huh. right? So he's like, I I'm not. He started the film industry, Thomas Edison. Yeah. But the Jews, he was. It was in New York, and he was like, we ain't fucking with your Jews. Sent them back over to Hollywood in the desert. The five moguls they created Hollywood. Joe Kennedy went over and said, listen, we need you to make a couple of good movies about our allies, the Russians, during World War Two. They made the movies. Then the fucking war ended. They, they had they a bunch of into, movies, yeah. then the Cold War started, and they released the fucking movies that Joseph go, made. Look at this. These dirty Jews, they're no good. Commie motherfuckers. <laughs> no, that's what they did. 
did. That's what the government did, man. <laughs> he sent the Jews up. A lot of people blackballed back then, weren't but able to work, ruined their careers. But they were told to do that by Joe Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. The black man has their the careers. best conspiracy theories ever. Not... But back then, they were just... <laughs> you, you guys and your conspiracy they theories in general, though. They ended Hollywood as we general. know it. They That's got it. such a, a reign of power over Hollywood by threatening them. They could accuse someone of being a communist, and you were a communist. Yeah. And you were out of the business. Goodbye. Done. So everyone told the line. All right, listen. we got to get into some other things. we got to get into the Donald Trump thing. Yeah, what's with that? Did, did you hear the news tease? Yeah. The fucking news. Listen to this. Plus, Donald Trump, a big fan of his daughter, what he says he would do to her if they weren't related. <laughs> How does the news get away with that? Donald Trump could have you killed. Who are you kidding? Oh the news God. is, uh, who's the guy from uh, CNN that got fired uh, uh, that said the news is a business? And he gotten like kind of almost like it was a controversial thing to say. Yeah, he just recently got fired. One of those guys. Of course it's yeah. a business. And he, he was uh, giving a speech, and he goes, the news is a business. Oh, really? We've been preaching that for years. People think it's actually uh, information, that you tune in to get the information, and then they are there to give you the information, and that's their prime goal. No, it's ratings, it's flash, it's outdoing the other guy that's doing the news to make more people watch your news. That's it. It's a business. So these teases, these things like that, where you hear Donald Trump, what what does he want to do? It's to get you to tune in. H how many times did you watch the news the other day that they teased that fucking poor garbage man son of a bitch that got flung out into the street and hit by a bus? And they cut it off right before something happened. He goes, this uh, garbage uh, man knocked into traffic. We'll show you what happened. And they show him get knocked back, fly into the street, and then they freeze it. It's like, what the... It's America's funniest home videos now, the news. Who was filming that, by the way? I don't know. Where did they get the filming? <laughs> I have no idea. Somebody who just happened uh, to be uh, filming. Someone, you're always being filmed. Put it this way. You're always on camera. Look. Hi. Hi. Do something right now. Walk out on the street. You're on camera. Well, listen to the news tease again. Plus, Donald Trump, a big fan of his daughter, what he says he would do to her if they weren't related. <laughs> Fuck her in the ass. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, that's not uh, 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 Make a suck his cock. Uh, he said he would shave her pussy for her if it wasn't his daughter. Here comes the beautiful Ivanka. <laughs> he wants to know if her pussy smells like his money after this. The sad part is you're not too far from the truth. It no. smells like a dollar bill, Donald said about his Here's daughter's the, twat. His, her freshly minted twat. <laughs> that is so fucked up for him to do that, man. Yeah, but oh. he, he admitted some crazy things, so they're not too far off on this one. Oh, okay, if she weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. Donald Trump made those comments during a talk show interview promoting his daughter's first appearance Young, on she's The a model. Apprentice. It all started when the Donald was asked how he would react if Ivanka, who's 24 years old, posed in Playboy. Trump replied, I don't think Ivanka would do that, although she does have a very nice figure. Then he added, if she weren't his daughter, he'd date her. After the show, Trump said he was only joking. 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 Yeah. Stop. Well, let's, say, let's say he wasn't joking. Yeah. Okay. Is that horrifying what he said? Don't get me wrong. I'm saying... To to see that your daughter's hot, it's to see that she's a good looking girl, that's a little and she's up. grown. Would you go, wow? She does that mean he's yakking off to his fucking daughter? I, I think, don't know. I think it's a great sense of humor. Uh, we use shit like that all the time on this show. I know that, uh, and I think it's very accurate. She's attractive. She's young. She's a model. If it wasn't his daughter, he probably would date her and marry her, and and because that's what he does. He takes young, attractive models. And has sex with them and uh, eventually marries them. So if she falls into that category. He, he takes them, It is a little twisted. He gets them young and damages them up pretty oh, good and then gets bangs rid of them, them up. The new one. Like fucking Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. He'll grab these young models, put a heavy city miles on them, <laughs> and then k kick them out and trade them in. Trade them he, in. He leases chicks. <laughs> he leases them. Right? It's a lease and he, he's got to pay for damages. It goes, in, it goes for the trade in. That guy, he's the guy that brings the lease back all beat up and scratched and they can't sell it. All right. Well, Ugh. the view was talking about this fine story and this fine comment. Of course comment. they were. Uh, oof. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Where champ. are you going?
<laughs> but you're something else, person. So, uh, uh, Donald, mm. all right, I, I'm, I'm afraid to ask this question, but what would you do, Playboy put Ivanka on the cover of the... All right, so now we get to see uh, if mm. he was kidding or not. So right. I didn't know this happened on The View. The View. I thought they were just discussing the story. Yeah. So they were discuss- uh, They had Donald Trump on. Of the magazine, and she had not. This is going to be an interesting answer. <laughs> she, he doesn't even want you to have a drink. I know it. So. It would be really disappointing. Not really. But it would depend on what was inside the magazine. If, oh. no, if oh. she posed, it would be fine. But if they put her picture yeah, on. Yeah, it depends on what goes inside the magazine. Well, see, that's her gripe. That's right. this girl's gripe. And, mm-hmm. and you assume nothing. there'll be nude, nude photos. Right, you do assume that with Playboy. Okay, she, but if there were, Playboy. she wouldn't have an issue with it then. If they were using her to... I don't think Ivanka would do that inside the magazine, although she does have a very nice figure. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it. Oh, it's so weird. Stop you it. know what? You are saying yeah. 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 well, you know you're saying is outrageous thing, Mr. Trump. Who are you, Woody Allen? <laughs> <laughs> this is so such a nonsense. Oh, my God. Yeah. Woody Allen is making a This is such a non-story. And the news picked up on this and made it uh, more serious you than it really was. Take it out of context. You print it. It's just fucking around. He's having fun. And then the news reports it as, oh, my God. He wants to started. sleep with his daughter. Look out. Comes the Donald. A non-story that the news blows up. That's a perfect they do example. do it all the time. I'm glad we talked about it first and then played the clip. Yeah, because definitely. Because out of context, when you read something. Sure. Uh, we've done this before. We've read quotes, things we've said. Right. And you read it and go, oh, that doesn't look good in writing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but at in all. the context of the show and us laughing and joking, of course. it makes perfect sense. That is exactly what that was. He's on The View, he's having fun, he's mixing it up with the girls. And uh, he throws out one of these outrageous, kind of funny comments. That's all Can that shut was. Shut the show down today, I'll go, ooh, Donald. They were like, oh, that's sick. It's a non story. He and he's trees. like, is that terrible? Is that. And then they have to make a Woody Allen joke. It's like, yeah. uh, you know. Can't come up with a pedophile from this century? Oh, come on now. Donald. Let's go to Momo. Momo. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Hey, uh, uh, two things. First of all,. Um, Yesterday, you guys were talking about how screwed up it was that uh, Dana Reeve died. Yeah, oh, some of that water, bro. Not yours, right? but... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but anyway, and uh, you guys were all castigating uh, God for, for doing something screwy, and uh, you were... No, we played it both ways yesterday, the Dana Reeve no, thing. No, no, I heard. Oh, I heard, who blasted heard, one? I just wanted to, I wanted to play devil's advocate with you. If you don't think there's a God... <laughs> you and, crazy motherfucker. Oh, my God. Patrice O'Neal just fucking farted. Oh, holy People shit. People are leaving the studio. Hold on. It's an alert. It's oh an alert. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Air traffic chaos after oh glitch. God. What? Oh, my God. That's the worst. Oh, my God. This what is, the fuck just this happened? Is, this is the worst oh. ever. I have never in... in Clay Aiken is get... <laughs> did, oh does anybody... God. Holy shit. This makes me want Jimmy Norton back. Like, <laughs> his farts aren't nearly this bad. What the fuck did you eat? What did you eat? I had... Uh, what did you eat? What are you talking about? Mm. Oh my God! Holy what shit. is going on? Hey Holy man, these, shit. you know, I'm telling you something. These news oh alerts, my God. these fucking news alerts, man, it's it's not right. Oh, I do. I wish they had pal smell. <laughs> it ain't right what these fucking news alerts. Dude, my eyes are tearing. Fucking talking Holy about Donald Trump. Shit! Wow, I smelt a little bit of it, and then uh, the whole cloud, the whole green cloud, came down <laughs> over my head. I was praying right, that that didn't happen. Oh, <laughs> Did you try a- to sneak it out? Oh, it was a bubbly one. Was it a one? A bubbly. <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> At least it dispersed. <laughs> it wasn't a rough. ever have one where you d- actually oh. feel your underwear expanding because it's all air? <laughs> you get a little lighter. It's like a hot air balloon in your pants. Uh, I was hoping that just hit me. I didn't realize that was so easy. Wow. You went for the that would have been one if you were alone. Very enjoyable. You yeah. went for the one cheek sneak, <laughs> didn't I need you? To, I need to uh, drink some chloroform. Uh, the, chlor- the, chlor- uh, the Clorox. Clor- <laughs> That's big Clorox. <laughs> Nigga, drink, don't drink. No, Let, all right, listen. the plant shit, nigga. <laughs> the bleach, drink bleach, motherfucker. Let, let's get back to Momo. <laughs> Momo. Momo. Yes, sir. Go yes. ahead. Uh, where Go were ahead. we? Well, I was talking about the whole God issue. Yeah. And uh, well, I wish Jimmy was there because he... Uh, well, just in case, you know, uh, because people only catch parts of the, the show every day. Dana Reeve, uh, she died, and it's just like, what? You question the fairness of life. Yeah, like she took care of the her husband, Christopher right. Reeve, uh, no, paralyzed for over a decade. 
Hold and, on, uh, Momo. We're get, this is called the setup. And then Jesus. she uh, uh, she winds enough. up getting lung cancer and dying shortly after uh, her husband dies. You would think, you know, after being a saint like that and sticking with him and taking care of him, that uh, after he dies, she would be able to then move on a bit with her life. You would think uh, if there was a God, he would throw her a bone like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to give you a pass for, uh, for a while. I'm going to give you a few years on that earth to maybe tells enjoy yourself. God throws a bone like whole civilizations get wiped out. <laughs> so go ahead anyway. That's uh, pretty much it, you know, and and you would think she would be be given the ultimate uh, reward for the second half of her life, you know. But what is she given? Lung cancer and about six months to live. And doesn't and smoke. That's it. And doesn't smoke. Doesn't smoke. Yeah. And when and but you know what? Okay, you can look at it the other other way. I, I I don't know, you know, if you touch, but at least he went first. Cause mm -hmm. it's like if she oh, went, wow. it was like he was just yeah. what he was Burden. by himself with no one. Burden but his son. on the kids, you know what I'm saying? So Those poor kids, Jesus Christ. And then uh, I want to thank CNN for bringing it uh, home for everybody. It's yeah. five in the morning. I, I throw CNN on, and this is what I hear: like dramatic music. Lung cancer, the silent killer. Ah, oh, there you go. You don't even have to smoke to get lung Dun, cancer. Dun smoker. It's the silent killer. That's what they're going to be. Uh, Big saying. graphic and duh, ominous, uh, ominous uh, music. To 20% of people that get lung cancer are non-smokers. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for reminding yeah, us that really? we can die from that, too. See you then. Thank you. A lot of it is uh, could be uh, other things you breathe in. But you then know. we took the other uh, uh, the other uh, angle on the whole thing. You know, she was uh, supporting the stem cell, and maybe God's saying, "Ah, leave the stem cells alone." <laughs> Why? Not too hip on the stem cells. Uh, well, well, that's what the religious well, right Well, a lot of the religious uh, right, For uh, what? they say God doesn't like stem cells. That's right. I have no idea why. Leave the stem cells alone. Oh, that's what on, a lot of the uh, the yeah the good old. I love religious the stem cells. Right I, I think the stem cells is right. I mean, every anything we do is is. It's it's God put it here. It's like right. if you think God a is the omnipotent, you don't think He knows that it possibly could have been stem cell research. Yeah, he already he didn't figure that. These people figured it out. I, they weren't supposed to ever figure that one out. Motherfuckers tapped into a part of their brain. I That's... did not open when oh. I was opening this motherfucker. I didn't give them the cheat code to their own brain. Yeah, <laughs> cheat codes, <laughs> motherfuckers. Yeah, it's like we figured out some cheat codes yeah, like, off of God. Oh, shit. This, these niggas figured out gravity? That's we got to get rid of them. That's a back door. Get what me? a brilliant way to look at it, Patrice. <laughs> cheat <laughs> codes. are such... Pompous ass. God knows if every, if there is a God. Asses. If there is a God, He knows everything we're going to do, everything we were supposed to do. That's pretty much the way they spelt it out for us. We have our free will, but He He's got to know what we're up to. Yeah, he knows we will be arguing about Him. He knows yeah. everything about what. It, that's why I think God is not sitting around waiting for people to dance disco dances for Him, putting money in a bowl and go Lord and Lord and. <laughs> And the Jesus and the yeah. boo boo. He just made Earth, and it's gonna. We're gonna demise at our own fucking time. What up? Whatever. He's busy doing what he did. It's science. Science is science. You and know we're, what? We're unfolding it. Imagine the, how how uh, pompous we are to think that we're not just some project, some godly project. If there is this God, like think of something you did in second grade. A project you put together. I remember once I made a dinorama of the um, oh, very nice. uh, sure. uh, uh, colonial yeah, sure. uh, United States. It had a little mirror for a lake. I had little pilgrim hat people cut out of construction paper. And you looked in and, and you saw a, a scene from uh, uh, the colonists. You know what's so sad about what you just said? And yes. this guy never, he didn't graduate high school. No. You didn't graduate high school? You didn't need nah. to graduate so that's high why, school. That's why you're ultra, like, extra smart now, compensating for it. I gotta compensate for it. I fucked super up. Super genius. Anthony, I made the same thing growing up, and I just called it, like, a pilgrim village. Yeah. What, what'd you call it? It's a dinorama. Dinorama, you asshole. Did, do, yeah. did you know that? Fucks no. <laughs> Thank you. Because when he comes up with this shit, it's always Jimmy and I looking at each other like, what well, the hell? It's a, know, it's a stupid village thing. You know how you were saying every time you find something out, you want to just share it with somebody? Like, any yeah. knowledge you get, yeah. you'd be like, hey, no matter when, you, you're trying to look for a way to talk about it. Yeah. And it's like, I just found out what gravity is. It just hit me. Really? With the concept of gravity. What it is. Space is not fucking empty. Space is an actual tangible thing. Right. And the reason we revolve around the sun is because the sun is pressing down in the middle of that fucking 
matter. That that space. That we're st- the sun's pushing down. So it's like if you if four people are holding a blanket on either side and you put a bowling ball in the middle, right? Yeah. And when, if now the bowling ball is sitting in the middle, if you put some other round objects on that, it will go directly go towards, towards that fucking uh, yeah. bowling ball, unless they're so heavy that they actually press inside the space too, but they're rolling around the area that the bowling ball is. <laughs> there you go, Patrick. Hey, uh, I, just representation. Fi- I just found out what gravity anyway, is. Anyway, but yep. a lot of people are asking, so that's a dinorama? Whatever. Diorama, yeah. A I, diorama? I, I, okay. <laughs> diarrhea? It's a diarrhea. <laughs> it's a no, diarrhea. Di- dinorama was actually what they used to film those old movies in, where uh, it was claymation. Okay. Because <laughs> yes. you did say dinorama. Yeah, diorama. <laughs> diorama. Diorama. All right. But, uh, yeah, and you'd look through it and see a scene from uh, the past. Oh. Now, now, think of, uh, to bring it back to the God thing. Yeah. That was very, very important to me back then when I was making it. It was it consumed my life as a second grader for a very short period of time as I made it and as it was displayed. Right. And that was my project. Fast forward fifty years later. Fifty years <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now it is a it is a distant memory. A distant, fond memory, but I could care less what happened to it, where it is now in the whole cosmic scheme of things. And I believe we are just one of these projects that are out there. Dude, stop. Uh, and, and, stop. And Can I ask you a quick question, Anthony? Did yeah. you used to do the uh, nuclear hide under the desk test? Yeah, I had to do that. Oh, Anthony's old as a man. I had to do that in, in <laughs> up until probably the fourth grade. <laughs> you just told your age. <laughs> The commies were going to nuke us, the you hill, idiots. The hill uh, have eyes. <laughs> I got it. Listen to this. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. That's right. Fire is a danger. Negroes. You can burn whole buildings if someone is careless. But we are ready for fire. We have a fine fire department to put out the fire. This is how they talk to the public. You have fire drills in your like school, children. so you know what to do. Automobiles can be dangerous, too. They sometimes cause bad accidents, but we are ready. We have safety rules that car drivers and people who are walking must obey. Now, we must be ready for a new danger, the atomic bomb. <laughs> the atomic bomb. How do you get ready for the atomic bomb? First thing you do is light up a Lucky Strike cigarette and thank your lucky stars you're here in the good old United States of America where we can defend our people against the dreaded Reds and their nuclear menace. With an ordinary school desk, you will save your life from a nuclear bomb. When you hear the alarm go off saying that a nuclear bomb is en route to your... Town USA, find a school desk and crawl underneath. Everybody gather at the schools and find a desk to crawl underneath. <laughs> this will not save you. This will just make it easier for whoever is it, who's ever left in the government to clean up the dead knowing you're all in schools. <laughs> <laughs> that was their gag. Remember the fallout shelters? Remember that? You'd still see, and you'd still see signs that say fallout shelter. Yeah. These were basements of buildings in major cities. Where people were supposed to go to escape the fallout from nuclear bomb, and then once it cr- crosses over like a pleasant little snowstorm, you'd come out and go back to uh, your life. Two years later. They, right. Yeah, two years later in a fucking apartment building basement with your neighbors. It's yeah, like you're the, really um, going to live. The, the planes, when, when planes go down and they say, put your, your, your yeah. head between yeah. your lap, Uh huh. that's not to save your life. No. That's, that's just so you... Uh, so, Break so, that neck when you, when the plane lands. It's just, yeah, we, we don't want to look at you. We, we, don't, just, we don't want you suffering. We just want your neck snap. Make this quick. They don't want to collect the pieces. They just want one. Just <laughs> make it quick. <laughs> yeah, stay in a lump. Hopefully you'll stay that way. Strapped in your seat. If you sit up, there's going to be a head here. And this, <laughs> we want you all we strapped in a nice package for the cleanup people. They find your head and be like, oh, this nigga tried to have dignity. and not <laughs> <laughs> He didn't fold up in a, in a old pussy-ass ball like we told. <laughs> they fucking, they, yeah, they put everything in position and realized this idiot was trying for the overhead. His arm was raised up trying to get his fucking laptop. <laughs> that nigga was in the bathroom. <laughs> right, here we go. But that's what, uh, and the fallout shelters yeah. were pretty much, so people would gather down there, and if anybody lived through this and society had to get together, there wouldn't be 
sprawling fucking streets and houses full of dead people. They could get it. They knew where they were, and uh, they could either cover them over or drag them out, whatever it need be. But they didn't have to go house to house getting dead people. Well, that's we, all it was. We got more audio from the duck and cover era. Duck and cover. First, you have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes. You die. You'll know when it comes. We hope it never comes, but we must get ready. It looks something like this. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. Cool. If you are not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. Hmm? It could knock you down hard <laughs> or throw you against a tree or a wall. That's it, huh? It is such a big explosion. It can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. Signboards. But if you duck and cover, you will be much safer. The internet can go out. <laughs> duck and cover from a top. Duck bomb. and cover. How stupid were we? I like that. It could knock you over or push you into a tree. It's it's a bully. <laughs> it's a big bully. Hey, why I oughta? <laughs> it's a nuclear fucking explosion, you idiot. It's not knocking you into the tree. It's frying you and the tree you turn, at the same time. Basically, you turn into a shadow. <laughs> yeah. For a split second, you're an ash until the blast blows that away and you're left as nothingness. <laughs> nothingness. You, you are always... reduced to a molecular level. You are not pushed into a tree. You do always think that just covering your head is yeah. going to save you. <laughs> Duck oh, and cover. Shooting. <laughs> there you go. That's fighting the nuclear war. Duck and cover, Johnny. Well, here we go. More audio. Here are some older boys showing what to do if the flash comes when you are not in the classroom. Huh. This is what to do if you should be in a corridor. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Mm -hmm. Remember to keep your face in the back of your neck covered tightly. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. Then, if the glass breaks and flies through the air, it won't cut you. <laughs> you might be eating your lunch when the flash comes. Duck yeah. and cover under the table. Hold up your drumstick. Then, It'll if cook. If the explosion makes anything in the room fall down, it can't fall on you. All right. This guy makes it sound like uh, nothing, really. Ah, well. If you duck and cover, everything will blow up around you. You'll sit there and be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The bomb might explode when there are no grown-ups near. Mm. Paul and Patty know this, and they're always ready to take care of themselves. Here they are on their way to school on a beautiful spring day. Mm. But no matter where they go or what they do, they always try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb. Duck and cover. <laughs> Paul and Patty know what to do. Paul covered the back of his head so that he wouldn't be burned. And Patty covered herself with the coat she was carrying. That'll do it. They knew how to a coat duck and cover. They acted right away when the flash came. If they had been at this doorway when the bomb flashed, Paul and Patty would have ducked and covered this way, like this girl. Heavy doorways are a good place to duck and cover. Sure they are. She will be safer, too. How did they get away with this? A coat. And this she was... covered herself in a coat. And do you realize when you see the flash, it's already too late? It is over, Johnny. If you don't see a you flash... You need to have ESP. Dude, there were tests done in Nevada with very small nuclear weapons. They blow them up. People that didn't even see the flash were affected because back then they, the weather forecasting was a little off and wind would blow and change direction and blow some of this fallout over towns and fuck these people up. I mean, leukemia and all kinds of horrific things. And that's people that were just... They didn't know what was going on. If you're close enough where you're seeing the flash... It's it is over. so over. And this is like what sixty five or something like that. Yeah. Right. Well, th no, this guy kind of sounds like uh, uh, like the fifties. At least ten years after bomb. after the fucking uh, they got the Japs, and it's like yeah. so they got film of the Japs. They knew what happened. Ducking in Nagasaki, and then afterwards, <laughs> you know, oh, good thing I ducked, <laughs> brushing brushing ash off them, uh, ducking the cover. Those yes. motherfuckers got eyeballs growing. The, the grandkids. Got eyeballs growing in the back of their yeah. neck right now. Right. <laughs> uh, Voss is outside the studio. All right, we got another uh, clip here. Here's Tony going to his Cub Scout meeting. Yeah. Tony knows the bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. He is ready for it. Duck and cover. Add a boy, Tony. That flash means <laughs> act fast. Yep. Tony knows that it helps to get to any kind of cover. 
This wall was close by, so that's where he ducked and covered. Tony knew what to do. Notice how he keeps from moving or from getting up and running? He stays down until he is sure the danger is over. Till the military comes and the shoots him. The man helping Tony <laughs> is a civil defense worker. Takes him out of his misery. His job is to help protect us when there is danger oh, of the atomic bomb. Roger. <laughs> we must obey the civil defense worker. And <laughs> to the men in the suits from the movie Blob. Yeah. The, the yeah. white suits with Yeah, until they show up. <laughs> this was just some more of that false security crap. Yeah, this is absolutely false security. Trying to make people think that if the Russians launched, we'd be okay. It's all right. Have faith in your government. They would have never reached, though. Everything's fine. Yeah, they had the bombers, though. They, they had the planes. There was no way. The only the closest thing we ever claimed to that, and that would have been dangerous, would have Cuba. been that, that Cuban crisis. Cuba. Well, that was pretty bad. In the 50s, though, let me tell you something. In the 50s, the Russians had some big fucking bombers, and something would have gotten here. Fly over the North Pole, drop their bombs. Not even. You don't think that not you a don't think fucking way no way. in the fifties they would have been able to do that <clears throat> no there was no, they could have bombed Alaska what did who we gives have? a fuck I think they would have been able to make it absolutely not there was never been a, a there there is not going to be a nuclear there may be when 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 them fucking Jews start shooting missiles at Iraq and Iran for their uh, other, yeah. other than that. No, nothing. We, we're surra unless they get into Canada, unless they sneak. So we're fucking safe. I don't know about that. Oh man, that's scary. That's that's a scary thinking you got safe. there, Patrice. Those the, the dirty Arabs. How the fuck are they gonna get a nuclear bomb in this goddamn country? They gotta sneak every piece in for the next fifty-two years <laughs> to blow up a building. Who gives a fuck? There'll be another. We'll take over Canada by then and make it the new New York. Canada's already gonna be New York. We need room. We need other. We need other places for people to live. We're gonna take Montreal. We're back. gonna take Montreal. We had Montreal for a little bit. We had Montreal for like a week or two. I just see the biggest danger as being those uh, friggin' old Soviet bloc countries that still have nuclear missile silos that go, you know, well, uh, what, how much are you willing to pay for the missile, They're still doing Mr. That. Ahmad? They're doing that, but they're only trying to kill Israel. That's their, that's where the problem, they're gonna, Israel is nervous, because that dude, Mahmoud, whatever the fuck his name is in Iran, he's a problem. Yeah. He is a fucking problem. When you get guys that t like him and the North Korean guy where America goes, that's our big thing is that we tell people what to do. But we and just got to throw them money, and they should seem to shut up. Fucking no, no way. Not this Mahmoud dude and not uh, that Kim, Kim Jong Jong Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, let's get the last duck and cover clip in. Duck and cover. This is, uh, has a creepy song at the end. Oh. Yes, we must all get ready now so we know how to save ourselves if the atomic bomb ever explodes near us. If you do not know just what to do, ask your teacher when this film is over. Discuss what you could do in different places if a bomb explodes. Older people will help us as they always do, but there might not be any grown-ups around when the bomb explodes. Then, you're on your own. How frightening is this? Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? <laughs> Duck and cover. It'll be okay. Duck. Right? And cover. Duck. And cover. That's all you gotta do. How scared shitless were we as kids? Duck and cover. And Pretty then, scared. And then in, uh, in a scared. week, you see Dustin Hoffman and Cuba Gooden Jr. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rene Russo on the way to blow up your entire fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. we Witnesses. About, we forgot about Momo. Momo, so you were saying, we went on like a 20-minute tangent Wow, we there. certainly did, Momo. What's up? What I was trying to get at was, uh, you know, we, we always... You know, we tend to blame God for the for the bad things in life, like you know when Dana Reeve dies or you know natural disasters or so on, so so on, so on and so forth. But my my, I'll posit this to you: Why should we always complain about bad things happening to good people? Why should good things happen to bad people? Oh. In other words, we're all bad. My, you know, if you really look at each one of us, we all have a Hitler within us, and so why should we all Some more than others not expect to have? You know, bad things happen to us. Um, Momo, I hate you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I really do. And you called yesterday like, why don't the, these guys ever put me on the air, right? You called yesterday with that or two days ago with that? Yep. I was, I was, it was a joke. And this I, is why I hate you, okay? Uh-huh. 
Because under your comments, it says, I have a 16-year-old daughter. I, I understand Trump. That. We hate I, people who try to fucking get on the air with one thing to get another point across. Right. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to comment on that. No, I you don't, don't understand. give a shit about your God crap. We have people screening calls not uh, uh, to, to get uh, 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 stories like that on the air. That's why they're there. They okay. see, I have a 16-year-old daughter, I understand Trump. And then the screener goes, oh, that's the subject they're talking about, that's what they want to hear, it's kind of a good subject, well, put you through. And then right. you bypass the whole thing by blurting out your theory on bad things, good people, good things, bad people, no one gives a flying fuck. Omo, even if you made a good point, I, I really don't like you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm replacing the M in the first word of your name to an H. You are now homo. Homo. I showed you. Momo, we don't we don't put up with that shit. Well, I'll get to my point then. My, uh, we, no, 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 no. I don't pardon you. We we give we give everyone a chance to talk in this you show. You know what? We certainly try. But when you like call up and say I want to talk about this, and we're like, oh, that's cool, and that's what we're doing right now, and then you like blindside us with something else. It's just that angered me so much. I'm bouncing a random person from Pal Talk. <laughs> Bye. There they go. And he's gone. Just any old motherfucker. Yeah. You had to pay. Wait Someone minute, had to pay. Wait a minute, but see, see yeah. what you just did? Yeah. Now, this guy, Momo, mm -hmm. helped you understand what you just did. Yeah. That person might have been good. And you playing God, you and, zapped that person. And Anthony, no, I that didn't. That person was Anthony's Momo ruined it. Was that person Anthony's bad? full of oh, shit, good. by the way, because he's not <laughs> bouncing any of the girls that are just flashing all morning long. It's completely random up there. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're Someone had for, to answer for, for Momo. That just person for an was Arab good, name. and you just, like an evil God. Hey, someone had to answer for shall Momo. It, so it shall be written. So, so it, it shall, shall be done. done. You are playing God. You know what? I agree with We Momo. will not hear the name of Momo oh, in this house again. <laughs> look, here's the deal. We really try to get to everything. You don't have to, like, you know, uh, try to fake us out to get your point on the radio. So people on Pal Talk duck and cover. <laughs> duck. When you see Anthony putting the mouse over your name, duck and cover. That's right, Mustafa Dazi. <laughs> Mustafa Dazi. Uh-oh, Mustafa's just seen a flash. What are you going to do? Oh, no, he's been bounced. Everyone else, duck and cover. Duck and cover. Uh-oh. What are we going to do? Who's next? Look at, oh. look at your screen, people. Oh, look duck, at your screen. Duck. Is it going to freeze up? Hey, is your screen all of a sudden going to freeze oh, up? Around the light? Uh, oh, no. He just took a hit. Oh, no. Duck. And cover. Oh, no, People no. are just getting bounced from Pal Talk. You're twisted, man. When you see someone next to you get bounced, duck and cover. Oh, shit. All right, listen, why don't we take a break? We got oh. Rich Voss here. <laughs> I just bounced three people. Oh, my God. Three innocent they can't souls. Get in for 24 hours. Bye. We got uh, Rich Voss here, and we got Adrian Frost here. She has a book called I Hate Other People's Kids. Oh, right. well, is that something I can get behind? This could be really, really good. I hate children. And uh, more with Patrice O'Neill as well. Of course. Are we back now? Yes, that's better. We had technical difficulties. A little equipment problem. I got an instant headache, by the way. I, didn't, I think I blew an eardrum. I'm not even kidding. After the U2 show at the Garden, I have my left ear is really fucked up. I got to go see a specialist. And uh, what was that? I don't uh, even know if they heard it in Radio Land. The instant replay, the little sound effect machine that we got uh, over here. You know. No, don't do it, please. Just making sound. It's fine now. Oh, okay. It had to be re uh, rebooted because something happened where it just it was taking uh, everything we were saying and wrapping it around and feeding it back, and that's what you heard was feedback. It was beyond feedback. Oh, my God. It was God. one of the worst sounds I've ever heard in and the headphones. Screechy thing. And Opie poured hot coffee in Voss's face. Yeah, that's it was unbelievable. pretty much. <laughs> that was some shit. i never seen that like that. He oh, got up and punched Voss. Punched I took my head and threw hot coffee in fucking Voss's face. What's wrong with you? I took the <laughs> headphones off and threw them at Voss by accident because I just had to get the headphones off my ears. That, that was the worst noise I've ever well, heard. Well, the feedback, I would blame it on the Jews. You yeah. Know, I mean... You, you control to. the media, so yeah, we got to control the, the media. Feedback, and know? we were going to talk about that Patrice O'Neill promo. He's doing his mm -hmm. uh, relationship show uh, this Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. on this channel, Eastern Time. And uh, intern Bill 
came up with a very, very racist, stereotypical. I love, I love, that. I love how I sound like oh, that. Horrible. What the fuck it mean? Yeah. It was like some kind of uh, in living color character. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And was just rolling and his just, eyes and, and he's really pissed makes, off. Makes it just makes me sound like man, man, I am yeah. nothing. What was that about? But in turn, Bill thought it was funny, and we were going to talk about it. Should we get yeah. Bill in here real fast? In turn, Bill, yeah. that you make smell things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bill, and, oh. Bill, Bill, Bill has it all together. Hi. He's doing promos. Brother, brother Weeze says hello. Uh, hello to Brother Weeze. Yeah, love the Weeze. My mentor. Here's yeah. uh, intern Bill real fast before hey, we uh, what were you thinking? explain who you are. Thanks. Um, Basically, that promo was made to sound nothing like Patrice, and I actually wrote it as a white, nervous person. But once I found uh, the person who voiced it, uh, he st I said, do a Patrice impression, and the person who voiced it had the least... Uh, similar voice to yours. So I said, that's so inaccurate, I'm going to use you to do the voice. And it probably just came off that way as racist. But Came off? It should be the Patrice and Rochester show. I like, <laughs> I like Bill the reluctant racist. Like, yeah. yeah. The autistic racist. Yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah, says, uh, niggas and specs! I don't uh, know. I don't I know. Who voiced that? Uh, Eastside Dave. Oh, Eastside Dave. Man, 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 right. man, 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 man. But there you so, go. We didn't get what we wanted out of that, so we'll stop running that thing. You're welcome. We were looking for a, a little... good promo if you're going to buy pancake syrup. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I heard the uh, feedback, uh... Opie, before you, you, and I ducked and covered, so I ended up fine. So you're all right? Yeah, you got hit with the blast. You weren't listening. Hey, could someone tape 10 weeks to better sex? That's got to just be a blast to listen to. Mm. Guess how long it takes? 10 weeks to better sex. Really? All right, let's see how to Adrian Frost. Good Sorry. Morning. Sorry, Hi. But, uh, it's all good. We had a little problem there. I think everything's okay. Yeah, a couple of glitches, as you, they call it. Glitch. You wrote a book. Uh, that, business. That's right down Anthony's alley, as they say. I hate other people's kids. There we go. I I uh, I read some excerpts and uh, I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. I I can't stand uh, other people's children. They are inconveniences to me and uh, my good time, my nights out. My time's flying on an airplane, in movie theaters. Any situation, when I leave the house, someone's child can completely screw it up for me. Shopping. On the subway. Subway. doesn't matter where it is. Restaurant. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's not even so much that it's happening, because I can, I can even, through my anger, understand that. It is the complete lack of understanding on the part of the parent to remedy this problem because they think their little angel is everyone's little bundle of joy. But after a certain oh, sure. point, kids are also completely responsible for their behavior. After, I think, around what? the age of four, yeah. it's like Pavlov's dogs. They know what they're doing. Well, yeah. they, they, know, five, they know how to get what, what they want. At five, they have to be responsible. I mean, to what Come extent on. do they get have to be Get a job and Hello? start contributing. Hello? They can send a canary down in the mines now to see if it's safe. Yeah. And after that, just take a horde of them. Let them go down in there. We need to bring back like Wait, the, do you the have child kids? workforce. I think do in this country. I mean, it's doing great in they other countries. They could sew. Oh, they can make shoes, dresses. I like the way you think. Mining for diamonds. Put them to work, I'll, I'll and then they'll be so goddamn tired at night then that we can go, go right out sleep. and they're asleep. Yeah. I was going to ask. Love you, Andrew. I was going to ask. I like what the way age? You think. I, I, because. Sometimes, you know, as adults, we have this guilt thing. Mm -hmm. But I, there have been kids where I, I don't look at the parents. I go, this kid is a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> asshole. <laughs> like the kid himself. You don't like him as a person because right. they're not being cute <laughs> they're, no. they're be, they know that they're being dicks yep. they're aware of they are being inherently a dick. And then evil they, yeah. and then they grow up to have a relationship show on Saturdays <laughs> <laughs> last night on stage at Caroline's this couple is just so awkward I said to them they were married I go look at you two are awful you know you're perfect together I go do you have kids and the lady this is true she goes I have two but they're dead, so don't go there. <laughs> On stage, they're dead. Whoa. I go, where are you from? And she goes, like, the Delaware Valley. I go, well, a lot of kids die in that area. It's a tough area to have kids. But it brought the show to a dead She was halt. serious. Yes. And I didn't know what to say. How about I then go, saying, no, you don't have kids? Yes. Why <laughs> Jesus. Would you? That's it. You should have thrown them out like Patrice does. He he just throw, Patrice will just point at people and go, get out of my show. Your kid is dead. Get out. Get, get out. out. Why? Get out. You're bringing the whole house down. Why are you here with dead kids? Get the fuck out of my show.
How many kids Why are you do you have? Us all out? Uh, I don't have kids. I have cats. I'm not. Well, no, it's I'm, just kind of funny. I don't that, want people to think I'm the fat lady on the couch eating funyuns with a ton of cats. No, I no, have you're a the husband. fat lady in the fucking in the radio studio. <laughs> uh, you're not the fat lady on the couch. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's oh, easy. Jesus no, right. At any time, feel free to goof on his tiny no, little no, tiny baby hands. Is, yeah, they, well, no, it's, it's little baby hands. Yeah, but it's the tiny cocks. That's that's where it stems from, really. It's a tiny cock. Please, I understand. His face is red, and there's a little bit of steam coming out. Listen, let me tell you something. You would never have a chance to see this cock, okay? I don't care how many books you write, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You can write a book. I love all the Jews. You never see I this cock. Love all the Jews. Shut up and take it. Now, listen to me. You have no kids, so it's easy to trash. I hate other people. I have a better vantage point. It's I the mean, best. I have a better. Boss has two better if you don't have kids. I know kids. he does. 13 and 15. Better yes. if you don't have kids. He's got a tween. Uh, so, <laughs> then you have a better understanding and, and of what it's like. To, people don't like Ross's kids. Yeah, oh, please. But you know my mugging kids are cool. They'll fucking they're tell probably you right perfect. Face. I'm sure that they're perfect. Yeah. No, they're, they not, they're not perfect. I mean, thank God they never, you know, fucking they're molested food like you did. And they're going to grow up to be normal, nice kids. I've, but, I've known Voss's kids since at least, I think the youngest boss. one was six yeah. or something. She's an ass. Like, she's oh, cool. aware yeah. that she's an ass. Like, she's what? so... Your, your youngest daughter. It's not like I'm a little teapot. No. Blah, blah. no, no, she's fucking. She does impressions of Chinese people and Arabs. <laughs> wow. This, wow. Well, that comes from <laughs> yeah, from daddy. Oh, from yes. daddy. First of all, it's uh, you know, God, God bless you. Hope your book sells and whatever you know. Okay, uh, maybe I'll even pass them out at the stress factory this weekend. Nine but here's the thing. With this bullshit. Oh, oh shit. But, it, but to, to trash <laughs> kids when you don't have, them, of course. <laughs> I know. Stop. You, a pamphlet. Wait, wait. Boss, boss, boss. boss. What? You don't trash. You don't trash kids if you have kids because then you understand how wonderful they are. It's like the people in uh uh the body snatchers that fell asleep next to the bean pod. The pod. That's what parents are. Yep. All of a sudden you you're partying, you're having fun, you can go to the Bahamas at the drop of a hat if you want and to. And the next thing you know, you're putting their picture on a tissue yeah, box. Yeah, the next thing yeah. you know, right. You went you fell asleep next to the pod, you wake up and go it's the most wonderful yep. thing oh, ever. You know and you assume everyone fell everybody asleep next to, to the yeah, pod. Everybody wants no, to see it. No, I yeah. didn't yeah. sleep next to the First pod. I want a plane seat without a kid crying there behind me. But no. you, always, it's, you, it's, always, you always, as a person with no kids, mm -hmm. you, you always say, I'm not going to raise my child like this. I always look on a refrigerator at awful kid art. Yeah. And I go, no, you just I'm going to tell refrigerator. my fucking kids that <laughs> this stinks. Honey, look at a real picture of someone who has talent. <laughs> And look at this fucking you snotty stick listen. figure you drew. A twelve-year-old kid in, in Cincinnati <laughs> put his thumb on a on a priceless oil painting last oh, week. Oh, isn't that great? You know, at a at a museum. Yeah, and also an adult cut up the fucking uh, 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 night watch of uh, uh, Rembrandt at the uh, Reich at the Reich Museum. Okay, and that was an adult. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so let's yeah. get here's the thing. Let's get no. into the kid thing because Anthony agrees. No, with well, Anthony agrees. Yes, but listen, I agree, it, I it, agree it, to a point. Yeah, I mean, I agree to okay, it's point. easy when the okay. kids start screaming and yelling at her at, at the restaurant. In life, the parents think it's their right to have uh, no, a dinner course. with their screaming kids. Yep. In the then you take them out, of course. But they don't. But here's they the thing. Well, obviously, like, what am I supposed to do? You shouldn't take them to a restaurant that doesn't have an animatronic rodent in it. Okay, looking at you, you spend a lot of time in restaurants. Okay, so here's the thing. Why the anger? Because. I just she's hate been, when people she's attack. Been nothing but nice so far. All right, I'm I, I'm trying to. I'll be nice to her. All right, here's the thing: if you were on a treadmill, you wouldn't hear the fucking kids. Okay? <laughs> oh what? I'm just saying. Why are you because, attacking? Why are you attacking? All right, don't worry about far. it. No, because because <laughs> does it make you feel better? No, it doesn't. Yourself? No, no, no. no. Rich, the more it does he it. does it, the easier it is for me to just look down on the top of his head. It's Ooh. funny, <laughs> right? I'm Ooh. sure you get that a lot too. Oh gosh, she's oh. blowing me. Uh, oh my. <laughs> God. See, I wouldn't it's, I, two, I would, it's Tuesday. I know it's 4 a.m. As much as I like to give head, Rich, I right. wouldn't want to give it to you because your pot belly would bruise yeah, my forehead. Oh, yes, a real pot belly. In and please, out. please, listen, Ralphie. Let me tell you something. Here's the thing. $10. A Jehovah Witness right pamphlet is sticker in this. Okay, That's not my you fault. fucking what's what? going what? on? No, hold on. Because I got this no. is wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong? Where's this kids? coming from? It's not coming from because I got kids and she's attacking kids. She doesn't she's not have attacking kids. No, shut well, up. This, this is like, do you know what the price of a book is okay. anyway? I know. First of all, <laughs> that could be a reasonable like, price. This is like it would be a nice tabletop book. 
Right. A tabletop book? Yeah, it's called tabletop. You have it laying around. It's a humor and, book. And it's, you tongue, look, it's completely it's tongue in cheek. It's and it could like, shut up. And it could help out yeah. when you have people come over your house with kids. If they why sit down on the table, maybe their kids won't uh, uh, take their greasy little hands and rub on your television. All over just, everything. Why don't you just like, you know your kids are. Why, you just turn it into a redneck book. Listen to me, truck stop book. This thing. What? You know, it's just. It's, it's a, a unique, oh. Okay, so one out of ten. And don't, people are saying that you're on fire. So No, I was afraid it would feed back. So I didn't hit the other eight. All right. no, I just wait, think wait, a wait, lot wait. of people have Look been afraid to Boss, talk about this for yeah. a long time. And, right. and yeah, this Boss, is take a break. Bring it to the fourth. Put it out there. We're going to throw you back on the bench. You had five great minutes there. Oh. You scored a lot of points. We're just going to rest you for a minute. All okay? right. I'll take a rest. I'm just. All right. You're listen. very good, though. All right. Because <laughs> no. Anthony is. Uh, is on this I've been preaching this for quite a while, and yeah. yes, it it seemed like I was alone. A lot of people are, are parents, and I understand that, and, and a lot of people are disgusted with what I say about kids, and I understand that. It is your problem. When you go out to dinner, and you're at a nice restaurant, and there's some kid <laughs> screaming about their food, and I'm trying to enjoy a night out, uh, why should I have to deal with it? Why shouldn't you get up? Leave money for your check and leave the fucking restaurant. Go where restaurant. there's a kids menu. Right. Go to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, they're not going to want to eat chicken marsala. Go to some urine smelling restaurant uh, with a diaper changing table in the bathroom and have your dinner there for the next twenty fucking years because I didn't decide to have kids. I got to deal with your problem. If it That's has my... koala care, then you can be there. There you go. There you go. No. And and and, and they... can you tell the 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 couch booger story? <laughs> Please. I, 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 I'm in my house. I don't have kids. This I don't could be want in your next kids. book, by no the way. Okay. I have a take, couch. You should take stories and make a book out of it. I have a couch, and relatives are over with uh, young children. And uh, a, a relative and, and the young child is sitting on the couch, and the kid's digging in his nose. Uh, digging, digging, digging in his nose. And then uh, pulls out his finger and puts it in between the cushions of the couch. <laughs> That's nice. And okay. the father says, what did you just do? And the kid starts laughing. He goes, did you just pick your nose and wipe it on the couch? And he goes, yeah. All right, well, find it. Now there's a kid searching for a booger. Now the booger's lost. Can't find the booger. Adorable. Isn't that the cutest thing? <laughs> so Adorable. So, yeah, right. So, so now uh, they leave. They're gone. And I'm staring at this couch going, there's a... There's a there's a hidden booger, there's a hidden booger in my in there. you know you know where the couch is now it's I don't know and then you, I don't know then you dress up in a Nazi Gone. outfit I had to buy <laughs> a new couch yeah. to put in the house which will now never have a child on it but because you bought it. And, and no like stop it it is not cute because it's a kid it doesn't it's have any not. booger germs. and then and then I got a uh, I got a, a a five foot wide television set. The thing is, I, I, it's my pride and joy. Mm -hmm. High def. The thing is wonderful. You know what that looks like when you turn it on and see little, little fingerprints, finger, little handprints mm -hmm. that, that belong mm -hmm. in that corner of the Blair Witch Project ending yeah. uh, are there with pizza grease yeah. uh, uh, smeared on. Click. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Could you get the Windex? Yeah. Have a yeah. Windex, man. What? A lot of patience with yeah. No, because now the whole house had to be Windexed up to four feet high okay. on the walls. You know what? Kids. Kids. Say your girl. Say you and your lovely girlfriend. It's uh -huh. not going to happen. We already know. Have oh. have an abortion? What? No, have <laughs> because that would be. The, the, you can still name it. I swear, <laughs> right. I swear to God. You can't keep she, it a swirl. If she was late. Was that five minutes? If right. she was late, she would have I'm an abortion. Checking. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm late with my period. Exactly. Let's just get an abortion just in case. Just in, in case. Like, yeah. you, just in case. You can't. You can't. Rape it. Let's just, just kill the blood. I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah. It's just. just Drano, Drano Drano I'm supposed to get my period at 2 right p.m. <laughs> and it's 3 p.m. Let's go to the clinic. Just in case. Let's go through the drive through In this world, you only got. you only got what you leave behind. What? And your legacy. Yeah. When you right. Leave your kid, yeah. What you know else something? You got, you the know what? internet will have clips of me ad nauseum Thank for you. years to come. No. They could download me doing Reagan. And your, your sperm they could was download the wonderful love. Are you saying? Are you I like saying to you leave a legacy too, along with an pharmacy? Rich, you ain't, <laughs> right. you ain't that fucking important no. that you need another <laughs> boss. Okay. You, you, are you saying you won't have kids? And by the way, what? you have no boys, so right. the boss name is dead. All right. How do you feel about that? that? You don't know what's happening in the next month. Oh, what's happening, Bonnie? Fucking somebody. That's fertile. She can keep, she can keep her name. His daughters can keep his name if they want to. Now you're not. You'll never have kids. No. 
is Chris not you're not getting fucked, or just say you just won't have? She said she was married. Oh, you're not gonna. That doesn't mean I'm getting happily fucked. married. But oh. I mean, I'm not saying. Let's go there now. <laughs> hey, I was married and I got fucked. Uh, Every four months, <laughs> I write a check. <laughs> uh, no, just not gonna have them. Really? Mm -hmm. Why you think you, you don't want to lose your shape? Um, oh no, it's, it's, I have birthing hips. Yes, I definitely oh, have the birthing hips. I'll say that. Oh, he cannot get off of it. What? But uh, you gotta lose it. What? No, I'm just choosing not to. I tell you, I you choose not to. You'll balloon up. Uh, I don't know. It makes no sense. A female, right. a female's put on this earth to reproduce. Oh, that's what, that's, okay. To reproduce. What else is, okay. What else well, is you know, so then you need to start working on your daughters ASAP. Yeah, I think uh, I can't. Right well, yes, they'll have kids. They'll just. I had no problem with them having as long as they're nice, white, superior. But I'm saying kids. now you can be proud to be involved in that. What do you mean? Whereas it's been, you know. Late I, night visits. Now you can just go ahead and date them out and open. No, I, uh, hey, you're listen. saying I bang my kids. I'm saying you <laughs> yeah, fuck your she's, two she's, daughters. She's, 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 oh, she's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Listen, listen, sorry. I'm telling you, even Donald Trump says it. You know, they look good. That's true. He does. He did say that. I'm just saying. And isn't that all they're really good for? That's the thing. As a female, cook, as cook. a female, don't you think she got you good? As oh you know wow, that, right? I, I oh, know she comes. really tore me on here that one comes. because I mean those tits you could breastfeed. Oh, I'm telling a lot of kids at this. when I hold other people's those kids, fucking, they think it's a buffet. Those, oh, that's those wonderful. Those village yeah, feeders there's, right there's there. Nothing coming out. Take one out. There's nothing probably hair out. in the nipple. No, Here's no. what I'm trying to say. Not anymore. Uh, yes, there's hair in the nipple. You're you know what? She's had no kids. So, uh, yeah, oh, okay, she's she's not Kate Moss sitting over here, but Hell I bet her body's a lot nicer I'm about than, you, than women that like, have dropped uh, uh, five kids. She's not Kate Moss. I bet her uh, body's nicer than uh, women that have dropped five kids out of there. Tripping over their own uterus. It may be a little you? smoother. That's about it. See, there it's you go. A, it's, I'm not trashing how she looks. I'm no, just I'm being, a beautiful no? woman. She said, yeah, you. Oh, there you go with the self-esteem. Oh, oh, here the we go. One. I'm big and beautiful. Here's Absolutely. The big well, you're, you're a step away from being a transvestite. <laughs> oh, I'm just fucking pick beautiful. Pick a roll or pick a roll. Shut up. You're a two on Wednesday. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus. A woman, okay, it's shut up. Good. I'm it's not trying to trash you. I like you. I know. Here's the thing. A woman's job in is in to, life is to reproduce. Okay. Okay? So if he won't bang you or whatever, when he jerks off on your chest, scrape it off, scrape it shove off. it in, yeah. and get get a kid. Because we do do a lot of tip fucking, I have to admit to that. Well, look at They are kind of nice, that. too. So hey. I am, thank you. Who would nice. you bring with you that's completely horrified uh, out there? That's my publicist. <laughs> oh, I just saw her <laughs> mouth the words, oh, my God. <laughs> she just mouthed, she oh, my now. God. What, what publishing like, company is she up? She's ready to yank you off oh. this show. Yeah, she's like, it's done. Oh, that fucking Look, lesbian. I, I love the girl. She's going to kill I me. agree with her wholeheartedly. Thank it's you. It's Rich Voss that's a, a vindictive prick. I know. No. Terrible, and you watch terrible. the sales of the book after her appearance. They're going to go through a <laughs> row. They, they will. You Don't you watch. watch. The end justifies the means. Don't, Don't worry about, about it. it. Oh, We're going to publish goodness. it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. It's things like that, uh, uh, the, uh, the restaurants and the <laughs> movies. The goddamn the movies. movies are bad. Why do I have to go see a movie like uh, an, an action uh, movie? Like Hostel. Yeah, like a horror movie, a horrifying movie, and there's kids sitting in front why of Why are you taking kids? Why would you take a kid to that movie? Hey, and they well, always you know, they can't, they think Here's they can't the get thing. If you're at the movies and there's a kid in front of you, move. I'm sure there's no, two. No, there's two, no I'm sure, theater. I'm Cats. sure there's two other seats on the other side of the theater. You're uh, sure of that. <laughs> You're absolutely there, sure of that. There is always here's a, here's a nightmare in a movie theater. Nightmare number two with the kids, because uh, night, nightmare number one is walking in and going, "Yo, I take this seat." Right behind you. Yeah. Because you know there's just going to be a lot of yapping going on there. No, but sometimes the brothers are funny. Come on. Uh, oh, please. Are you, well, do you go out with I a black guy? I'm petrified. Do I go out with a black guy? Are you guy? married to a black guy? I'm married to a tall Jewish man, who, a Sabra, who was born in Israel. Oh, really? Black. Yeah. Oh, now I, I have had some, some black folks. Well, because you've oh, wow, really? a black, black profile. I know, I do. I've got the... I know, I know. You know. I know. Wow. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. You know. Very open-minded. You know, <laughs> she fits in the black profile. Yeah. You know how you guys are. You never have hot I don't have fucking idiots with that shit. What's I that? mean, I'm not going to smash her, but she's done fit into the black guy's profile. Why? Because she can write and read? Why? Here's the thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> she, so I wrote Rich, this book. Rich, you are the anyway. worst, man. And when anyway. I walk into a movie theater and I hear this, I hear... 
from like a few rows back, I go, okay, my whole experience yeah. is ruined. You can get your you money know? back. Well, well yeah, I've, no. I've, I've turned in. Have you done that? Back. Yeah, I absolutely have. Sure. Well, she's a Jew. Sure. <laughs> I'm not a Jew. My husband's a Jew. Well, He's a Jew. He made you get He's your money Jew back. He's a with a tattoo, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh. He tattooed himself. Oh, he, okay. He's got the Star That's of you. David tattooed on him. That's how confused Rich Voss That's your is. your next yeah. book. People with tattoos or something. No, Jews with tattoos. Jews with tattoos. That would be like a yeah, that'd be a hot. But you were with tattoos. Right, listen, we were, listen, listen, loyal listen. And we were saying, the religion hold on, we're same. gonna get at the same time. This is yes. this is one of those crazy shows. We're gonna get back to you. I promise. Thank we got you. Lisa Loeb on the line who wants oh, to say hi real fast. Lisa Loeb, number one single. Lisa, mm -hmm. you you watch the show? Sure, sure. Well, I do uh, best week ever on VH1. So there's a lot of stuff that I you know take a look at. Right, mm -hmm. well, Lisa and Loeb. That was one of them. We love hi. hi, hi, welcome Lisa. to the Opie and Anthony program. How are y'all doing? We're doing good. Very uh, spirited, high-spirited show today. <laughs> we love her show. You like the it's show? Bonnie, show? Bonnie and I watch her show all the time. We love her show. When she went out with this guy, and he goes, don't slide across the seat of my car or something. <sighs> Sit in, you know, oh, I, that guy she, was an asshole. Yeah, don't I, I watch the show every week, too. It's a great Why? show. She showed her Heine, which was just it's gorgeous. Good, ooh, this uh, is Rich Boss, uh, last comic standing. Wow. Uh, it's a great show. You really like the show? We, I'm telling you. I, I hate just the show. You. Why? I don't care. I, oh, like no. <laughs> I really don't what? like this show. I do. And What's the problem? Well, explain the show, Rich, to everybody. It's She goes on different dates. She's trying to find the right relationship. One, she's attractive, all right, and she's Jewish, which is great, okay? This is Rich Voss from Last Comic Standing. And uh, she goes on different dates, but most of the guys are just idiots. She went on one date. The guy was nice, but he was too young for her. Right, and it also has uh, her friends on this. That one girl that was in uh, the movie with uh, De Niro. What's that girl's name? Boy, you are Ileana really Douglas. selling this show, there, Rich. What's that? Ileana Douglas. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a good show. It's I I, I watched guy reality. Sang her song. Did what he, is it did about? You see that when it's he sang about, a song at yeah. karaoke? She, Lisa uh, Loeb's uh, Loeb moves to New York to find a man and to uh, get another hit single as well, right, Lise? Well, a hit single that'd be easier than getting a man. No, I'm just kidding. really. Uh, no, both of them are. are are long processes, you know. It's it's. Uh, and her mom wants her to get married because she's she getting up to, there. And she's my mom. Getting up there because she's a nice Jewish mom. Well, this Lisa Loeb, yeah. thirty-seven. Just You're thirty-seven. Maybe she's good looking. Now. She went to the rabbi's house for dinner. That yes, uh, they did go to rabbi's hmm. house for Look, dinner. It's kind of like Sex in the City. It is only. But the reality, real uh, yeah, yeah, it's the real version of Sex in the City. Are right. you are you uh, having sex with these guys and reporting back? Oh my God! There's all kinds of crazy sex, and there's just—it's a, do, a docu pick. No, I, I'm not having it. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're going I'm, out on like nice dates and stuff, and yeah, I'm going out on dates and feeling then, them out. Um, well, she went. Uh, she went on a date with uh, the, this really, really ridiculously rich guy that had a Rolls Royce or something. Yeah, he had a crazy car. It, yeah. A friend of mine wanted to set me up with him, and uh, actually, it was it was you might know Jay from um, Queer Eye. He's the one. Who's I, uh, Rodriguez. Of, Patrice knows him. Yeah. yeah. You know, Jay? He, um, he's one who's more in charge of, uh, like, what to do when you're out on a date. Culture is what it is, I think. Uh-huh. And uh, anyway, Jay, Jay hooked me up with that guy. But you're getting dating advice from a gay guy? That's a little weird. You, you no, the gay get... dudes are always giving chicks advice on dating because they can kind of spot what the good guy is supposed to be because they're kind of after the same thing. Well, on this date, too, if you didn't see this, she was having dessert. <laughs> right. She was having dessert, That's and great. she said to, tell, to the guy to tell her to stop at some point. But if you didn't see her say that, and the guy, when she's having dessert, he goes, stop, no eating. So if you didn't see the part before, you're going, this guy's a real ass. Exactly. You know, uh, you should see the girl in the studio. Someone should have told her to stop about a year ago. But here's what I'm saying. Rich. No, I'm just getting That's why I'm involved in this. Like, so one of the He's just a, a one-trick pony with that joke, aren't you? All right, I look, love Lisa Lowe. All right, will you shut up and let her talk? <laughs> no, I was just going to say that that's one of the reasons that I was able to do this show because I'm sort of, I, I mean, I watch reality shows. I think they're really funny and entertaining, but... I also know that they change a lot of things when you see the show, and, and people are put in positions yeah. and say stuff that they would never say and, and, you know, make them look like idiots. But I just wanted to make sure it looked like what was actually happening. I mean, I also wanted to make sure they weren't shooting my life 24 hours a day. I would never agree to that. No. Where, that's, that's crazy. Embarrassing but, things like going to the bathroom and stuff. Well, unless there's an issue you might need to know about, that yeah. would be okay. <laughs> you know, when you watch the show, it looks like you're trying way too hard to get a man. 
Why? Why should you have to try so hard? You look, I'm going on dates. I'm walking out of my house. But like you, t you're just looking at it way too seriously, and and you're too. I'm per 38 and next to this weekend. Well, you come across like you're a bit on the desperate side, and you're, you're oh, I, and and you're a good looking you're a good looking woman, but it's like oh my god, I need to find a man. I need to find a man, and that's the problem. And, 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 and if you're going, I think if you're going about it uh, like that, you're never going to find the the right person. Okay, Nobody I have a question it. for you really quick, and then we can and then we can move on. But are you single? Uh, no. You're not single. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm dating someone. You're and I'm, dating And I'm very, someone. very did happy. Did you go on a lot of different dates before you found this person? Uh, yeah, like anyone else. And did you come across a lot of women who said on the first date, look, I want to have kids and I want to get married? No. Eek. No? Did you, did no. you get that? No. Okay, because I've heard a lot of women who go on dates. I've heard it from guys. And High school they say, girls are not, you know, thinking that way. <laughs> and they say that stuff. And to me, that sounds desperate. When they get right in there and start getting sort of obnoxious and not even just have a couple conversations. Is that what well, they're doing? Right. Like trying to spell that's out a relationship right away? And <laughs> they in a so rush. compared to that kind of situation, I'm just mm -hmm. doing this in the way that I know that my smart friends do it. You try to meet people. You go on dates. Yeah, a lot you of talk it. to people. You try to be discerning if you realize, you know what? They're not so easy to talk to. Maybe I shouldn't go on some more dates with them. But, yeah, because women... But it looks like you you want to get married, like, tomorrow. Yeah, she's looking to... Well, I do. I want to have kids tomorrow, but I also don't want to get married just to have kids with somebody oh. that I don't even well, like. Kids. Love. It's the lottery. And it's also a TV show. It's edited. You don't see, like, the, all the time that passes in between... Yeah. All the things that you see, so it's all, you know, put together in one and, thing that's chock full of dates and, and situations. You, but and then you go out and you're like you're like too perfect. Oh you gotta get that's a little terrible. You gotta get a little messy. Just a little bit. I'm, I'm not talking about a skank look. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, rough. Mess up your hair slightly, or, or I'm from Dallas. I'm but, from but Dallas. You, but you, you walk know. out with the latest fashions, and you're just perfect. Those your makeup's perfect, and everything. <laughs> yeah. What's the, main, the what's the main thing? But I love you. That's very nice. It looks like you, you wouldn't just hang out in like, uh, <clears throat> a, you know, a, a, a bar and just like, you know, throw back shots. Well, I probably and get wouldn't loose. do that anyway. Who's her husband? But, what's her husband? What's what you looking for? Like, yeah, what's the main thing you can deal with and the main thing you I think can't she's live without? For, you're looking for a Jewish guy, right? That's not the main thing I'm looking for. No, what's what is the main thing you're looking for, and what's the main thing that's that's a no no? In, um, in the main thing I'm looking for is um, somebody who's kind and loving. Actually, it's hard to say one thing because I want somebody who's kind and loving, okay. who's ready to get into a serious relationship, who's single. They should be single. That'd be a good. You thing. haven't you haven't met him yet. Um, I've met a lot of those people, but then there there also has to be some kind of chemistry. Right. Hmm. You know. You know. You know. Well, you know, there's no single guys out there, right, Lisa? Where did you hear that? Oh, here he goes. It, it He's an expert, yet. by the way. Patrice O'Neill is an expert. I'm sorry. No, I'm He's saying, got his own radio show on I'm relationships. Saying, I'm just saying, Lisa, uh, there are no single guys. When you meet them, there's about 10 other women. So you just have to have enough patience to, to weed them out. You have to be competitive with those other nine that I, I are it, hanging it's around. Game. It's, it's just, you know, you meet people. It's like when you're a kid and... Yeah. You're picking your teams, and you say, oh, I like that person. You put them on your team. Oh, it's really and then you see easy. if it works out. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, 37. I'll tell you Good what. Good luck to you. <laughs> if, if I, if I, well, I, I know. It's like, why look at it in such a negative way? Well, no. because that's the truth like, way. My sister Debbie and I talk about it all the time. They say, oh, it's there's no that. single men left, blah, 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 blah. They're on. If I was it, single. Well, then who are, like, the... 20 people who have been emailing me and calling me. The ones that want to sleep with you, Lisa, because I'm looking at you, and I'll email you, too, and lie. Because <laughs> you're hot. And then I will read you and say, no, but maybe maybe that's originally, maybe that's really nice. You'd like to sleep with me. And then maybe we talk. Maybe maybe I'd want to sleep with you, and, and we'd be set. And we actually end up liking talking to each other. Yeah, see? There you go. You, you never know. You, you never know. Annie up first. That's got, what it is. You can't Annie up. You got to Annie up. 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 I got to bring up an episode that just really pissed me off, Lisa. Please do. All right, so you're dating all these guys in New York, right? And there's a new thing in the dating scene where you do, like, chores together. What, what is it called? Or Oh, yeah, that was you know funny. What? Aaron to date. It's Aaron to date. Yeah, so instead yeah. of doing the regular date, the, you know, maybe dinner and a movie, whatever, this yeah. new thing is happening where if you're dating, you do chores together, basically. Like, yeah. hey, I need containers, and you need containers. <laughs> Yeah, you oh. do. So they went. Things. So she went. Oh. She went on a date to the container store, right, Lisa? The container right, right. store. And this is where I'm like, holy crap! You pissed me off so bad. Why? So it's the end of the 
the quote errand date, the the chore date at the container store. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she buys containers that were how much? Two hundred. It was so. close to three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Guess who paid for her containers? No they way. Were on a date. No way. The guy. Yes, because they were on a date. And why do you think he did that? What do you Why do you think he did that, Lisa? Because he was a lovely guy. He had stocking he containers. Wanted, no, because he wanted to pay for me. He was mad at the last date I paid for him, and he thought that was really. Yeah, but paying for a date like dinner or something is one thing. Paying for a shopping spree. Why didn't you go yeah. to the shoe store? And do you know what yeah. happened yeah. on the next show? Were you, you gave the money. Huh? Do you know what happened on the next date where I saw him? What? I told him that I thought he was a little young, even though I really liked him, yeah. and I gave him three hundred dollars in cash and said that was ridiculous that he had paid for my. Oh, stuff. but I think I think someone got to her and said, "Look, I, no, I was no. I was talking to my friends because that's the thing. Uh, I don't know. I I'm think someone got to you and said, you 'You're you're looking really bad, yeah, man. You better give that money she, back.' She had to get that money back because she bought her way no. out of possibly this exactly. guy going. Hey, look, yeah, that's what women do. You buy them a drink, and if they think that you know she's she has to. Give him his money or buy him a drink too, because that's right. like a, a ownership kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So he probably yeah. thought three hundred dollars. That was a, that was about how he much thirty seven year old worth. Yeah, give me no, that. No, no, no. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's an interesting mentality. concept. But what my deal was that I'm I'm an independent person. You know, I make a living, and I I'm used to paying for whatever needs to be paid for. You know, yeah, it's not a problem. And my, and I was doing a lot of things on dates. Because as a person who's, and a lot of women will relate to this, people who have jobs, careers, it's not like I'm looking for some guy. I mean, it would be nice to have some guy who could help contribute and be a partner, but I don't, I'm not looking for some guy who's going to be my sugar daddy, and that's it, that. It, it was just weird that you allowed him to... I, tr I was trying way. to let him do his thing. He was the one who wanted to go on the errand, and I thought, all but right. When he was pulling out the credit card on the show, he yeah. was like, I can't... She's actually going to let me... I know, he was it. doing it real slow. Real you know? slow. Like, <laughs> I don't have this kind of money. I'm not going with this bitch on a date to the car lot. And then he asked me out again, and I was like, yeah. this is ridiculous. This guy, A, he doesn't... He can't afford this. This is crazy. He's a sweet guy. He's got a business that he started. He's in regular job, but he also has another business he's starting. And I don't feel good about this. In, in other yeah. dates, I would be paying half. If it was something really over the top. If it's buying junk for my house, unless he has like some specific gift he was giving me, which would have been really nice and totally unexpected, he shouldn't be buying that stuff. Would I you totally agree with you. Are you kidding me? It, it just you, looks so bad on TV. Would you go on a date with me? Just I'm married, but just to see if we would have hit it off, you know, see, just... I would do that just because I think. By the way, the phones. Everybody wants to go out. No, but I I look at her help. because I'm a Jew, but I'm not your typical Jew. You know what I mean? No, and, I don't. I, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not you know like real yentive, and I'm not cheap, and you know I'm not like I'm kind of like a tougher type guy. But I oh. think we would get along. <laughs> are you kidding? And I think, uh, right? But I'm married, oh. and I don't See, think you're like, married is like one of the number one things. That is and yeah, no. that's probably a biggie that's, right about now. Huh? And your slobber yeah, is a, a close surprise. second. Surprise! Huh? I don't want to date someone married. I don't think married. Lisa Loeb is in the situation now where she can sit back and wait for the guy to leave his wife. And, well, no, I just to have lunch and see if we would have hit it off. And, and Lisa, you live in just a different world as far as New York goes, because the other show was where you went to, a, I guess it was a club, and it was a dog date. Oh, yeah, that was funny. What the hell is going on with dates with these thematic dates? Can't people just go out? And I got to no. admit, yeah, this is... Yeah, they can, but, you know, we're making a TV show. And uh, so, I hear No, you. but you this know, is... Uh, you know, I, she's making a TV show. I, I understand. Take things one step further. Like, I, I went with Ileana to the dog run. She wanted me to go yeah. to the dog run. Because she said, you meet people at the dog run, which you do. We, like, immediately, some guy got my number. I'll help you out here, Lisa. And so I was like, okay, I'll go to the dog thing. Plus, a friend of ours, Yana, makes these hilarious clothes for dogs that match people clothes. And I'm into that kind of weird, thematic clothing every once in a while when I'm not wearing all black. So we went to the dog party, and there were some interesting people there, for sure. Yeah, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make, because obviously you're making good TV, I could tell you were like, what is this about? So you went along with it for the show. But what amazes me that is that people are actually doing this, trying to find... You know, somebody yeah. uh, to love. I you have to make an They're dogs and they're okay, pets. Here's the thing, though. Like, I, I truly believe this, and I hope I'm not offending anybody who I'm about to go on a date with later this week. But it's important to get to the date early. You got to get at. A lot of people stop, have stopped trying, and they don't even leave their house or their apartment, and they think they're in. Maybe they'll meet like the pizza delivery guy. I don't know. We all love pizza, but another good way to meet people is to, the first step is to leave the house. So even if that means leaving to do something that's not 100% yeah. what you think is a cool thing to do, mm -hmm. you might meet somebody. Those you know, like, 
I went to a J-date party once, oh. and the bartender was really nice. What's that? It's I didn't go to the standard. J-date party to meet the uh. bartender. But you know what's you know? the worst when you're on a date, like at a nice romantic dinner? What if the bartender you... was a nice fucking guy? Well, no, exactly. The worst... Then I, all of a sudden I've met somebody that I didn't plan on meeting. I didn't plan on meeting somebody who had attended the party. Well, you know, I used to be a DJ and, and in bands when I was in high school, and I wasn't at the party because I was the DJ. In the... Would you allow yourself to fall in love with a guy that has uh, a basic career and no money? If he is really hardworking and excited about what he does, yeah, and and has things that he wants to do, and if he can about them, possibly yeah, make it bigger than that bum is now. He'll, yeah. he'll do it. <laughs> no, you know, if there's some potential like, to an upside. Like better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that truly the first part of their life, and they're going to continue yeah. to to grow and to be a, great at what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. Lives in mom's basement, yeah. out of the question. Well, the worst is when you're on a date and you're having a nice dinner and there's like a little kid crying behind you. It's just the worst. That that would ruin the show. That's when a... you bring your shotgun. Yeah, I Not hate when kids are out. They, they, should, they shouldn't be out. I'm going to come out with a book about hating other people's a kids. A final uh, observation well, about you this. You have kids? I have two, two daughters. Two daughters, believe it or oh, not. Oh, so you're trying to get away from it. No, I, I, I love my kids, 15 and 13. Hey, uh, a final wow. observation. You got that older friend in the in the show? That's like um, that's like Samantha from Sex and the City. Iliana? No, oh, no. Is, she, is yeah. she a cougar? Tell her to calm down with the crazy fashions. Uh, she's just got her thing. All, all of a sudden, she has a, like a sundress on with a bow that's like four feet mm -hmm. long. Yeah. What what happened, Rich? I don't know. The wire touched my leg, and I thought it was like a rat or something. Uh, um, <laughs> you should wait, 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 a rookie, single? huh? Or gals? Or in, is anybody there single? Like uh, dating single, Jim Norton. Uh, like, 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 like saying Jim Norton, there's, there's not a here. woman in your life, like it not claiming a woman. No, but every guy is there's no single guy. I'm not because yeah, every day a guy is trying to get a girl. They're always looking. <laughs> They're always looking. Not me. You should be on the show. Because we could talk about get, getting girls and girls getting guys. You don't get guys. And then at guys. what point do you decide? Okay, you know what? What are you doing I to get guys, Lisa? Besides just existing. What is what? What, I what are you to doing to get a man? Oh, she's bless going. Her she's guys. going on Existing. dates. She's no. finding alternative methods in she's which to meet guys. She's not doing shit, but breathing. She's doing more she's, than no, breathing. She's, she's doing being, more than breathing. She's making a decision on who gets to be with her. She she's is doing, doing what she can to find love. Patrice. To get a man, how do you get a man? How? Does, how? how? She stays in shape. But she's let pretty. Lisa talk. No, people are coming to me, and at the same time, I'm just, I'm just getting to develop my life. I'm I'm working on things in my career yeah. still. I'm I'm working on a new album in the studio. She, me, I me. I go to the gym. I'm maintaining, I, maintaining men mentally, me, spiritually. Me, me, me. I, I'm maintaining until I find the guy who's worthy of me saying, oh, okay, Mr. You have no... All right, forget it. Well, well, uh, good luck this, to you, this is what you'll hear Saturday on Patrice's uh, uh, yeah. love advice show. Yeah, he's got a I'm twisted way of looking at relationships. It's right. just nice nothing. Man. I'm looking at her. She's 37, right? But this picture is so sexy. But this is a picture that should be of a 20 year old or 19 year old. Like, hey, watch out! I'm pulling these little the little titties are popping out. I'm still <laughs> little. I'm still yeah. I still got it, y'all. But you're 37. You got some skills to to get. And and no offense, I haven't been trashing you. Wait, but I have stop. To what? <laughs> but what's she supposed to bring to the table? Work. What are you? What are you talking about? I'm I'm, I'm saying to you, Lisa, you are getting of an age where you have to learn. You're sounding like a 20 year old going on dates. You're right? almost so you finished. Are, I'm know, saying you are acting like you are the prize you were back in the day when you wore poodle skirts. Now you're prize, three like years away no from one. the big retirement age for women, which is 40. <laughs> and you're walking around like you're making decisions. Uh, whatever. No. Enjoy. <laughs> I don't. I don't agree with you. Yeah. All right, let Lisa talk here. I, I, I'm not. Right, hold on. Hold on. Let her talk. Like, I'm listening to. This, this is, is annoying. Hilarious. No, no, no. Wait. This is actually hilarious. I want to know what you're talking about. You're making comments, but 
I want to know how that can actually apply to me and what, how can it help me. It can apply to you unless you want it to apply. It meaning the, exactly. the fact... You have to give me some context and some information you some, in I, order for I, you I, to I, apply. I, I'm going to give you the context. The context is stop going on these dates. No, not context. Content the with con an N. The content of it? The content yes. of it is stop going on these dates with the idea that it's about you. It's you're at an age now. It's about a guy. Right. You have so what to, does that mean exactly? Because that doesn't make any sense. It makes a, a perfect sense. And the fact that you're just denouncing it, saying it doesn't make sense, doesn't mean it doesn't make no, sense, no, no, wait, Lisa. So explain to me. Give me a scenario and say this is how that date could have been more about the guy. Uh, maybe make that decision that instead of. Oh, that, like we was talking about if a guy lived in a basement, okay? And right. how instead of, this, this is what I'm saying, the difference between a man and a woman in this. When right. a man meets a woman who's a loser, uh -huh. men build that loser up until he's that, that girl is his woman. Now, if you go out and you meet a loser, see, you're trying to hit the lottery. You're trying to, you're trying to meet a winner and go, boing, I won. Right. But you're not trying to do anything to kind of create something for yourself. So it you has want to me be to change a man. Basically, the most anti, most men say that that is absolutely the wrong idea because men hate to be changed. You don't want to meet somebody and change them. That is the most... That is the worst situation. No, Think about it. Uh, wait, Men uh, bitch and moan more about anything than women who try to come in and change them. No, the I, I agree with her, actually, yeah. In, you, you notice people's flaws, and you notice people's upsides, and what's great, and what's strange, and you accept them. Well, here's and you the thing appreciate too. them. And maybe there's a couple of things here and there that you have suggestions for each other. But you want somebody who you can love as they are. A guy does not want you to but come. But you and just said them. you didn't They're love a guy as he you. is. If a guy she comes in found and, the and, right he's guy. A, and he's a hardworking plumber, you go, I love this hardworking plumber. As long as this motherfucker don't stay one. <laughs> see, no, that, that, see how terrible that is? You want me to go in there and say, find a guy and make him the right guy. Yes. That's ridiculous. D Why but, would I want to do that? But you're searching for the right guy. That's what my point is. My point right. is men, we get like, okay, no. Opie's, Opie's want to be changed. Come on. We, I didn't say change a man. I'm saying that men, when we go get a girl, we don't just say, okay. Like when you, when you don't like us, like when women go, do you have kids? And you go, yes. And they go up, check mark, cross mark. You have kids. It's not for me. But when a guy a woman comes in with children, a guy's like, you have kids? And she's like, yes, I have two beautiful kids. And you're like, all right, we'll figure out how to work this shit out. You know, I usually right, don't want my... I've done too. Excuse me? People say, I, may, I went on a date with a guy, the it took container store guy, for example. And immediately I knew, he, this guy's too young for me. But I said, you know what? He's a sweet guy. He seems nice. I like his style. His haircut to me is cute. He has a little business that he's starting with making these really cool T-shirts. And he has a whole other business. I know him through a couple of different friends. I'll go on some more dates with him. Maybe he's okay. He's not the exact guy I had in my mind, but I'll try it out. And I, I give it a chance. But then at a certain point, I realize it's not fair to me to keep dating this guy when it, it doesn't feel right. But that's what I'm saying. That but yeah, you've got to be open-minded. You can't just shut your brain down. I didn't want to date any musicians, and I just ended up kissing a musician and after. And this is what I'm saying, Lisa, to you, is that... The frustration, and I don't know if it is frustration because you, you're, you're very career oriented, but the, frustra the frustration that women have is that you go out and you meet men and then you go, I, well, I wasn't going to date a musician, but maybe I'll date one now. See, men don't have that option in their life where they go, I wasn't going to date a girl who worked at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But now we have to treat the girl at McDonald's the same way we have to treat the <laughs> girls that have the books and the girls that have... They ha We have to approach them with this idea that we have to create happiness for ourselves. Happiness has to be thrust upon you as a woman. You're no, waiting you're for totally Prince wrong. Charming. And happiness, you have to but be happy you're not before doing you any, get into But you're not doing yeah. anything to create a date for yourself or or more for yourself it's basically this guy has to come in and be this way right out of the showroom out of the you showroom know, we're willing to put some options in the uh in the vehicle after we buy well that's fine that's great and i i i assume that no but that's guy, what people do for each other when they love each other you know no it's all impress each other but you well, what changes these. are you willing to make i'm willing to um on the religious side, actually, I've, I've developed a lot, and I'm willing to to try to celebrate other person's holidays. Denounce uh, yeah. Judaism? 
No, I'm still, I still so Jewish. You're willing to I raised my kids Jewish, but I was more strict uh, about if it a guy, before. If a guy said, okay, this weekend I want you to go to the stress factory to see Rich Voss, would you go to a oh, comedy? Oh, what a cheap <laughs> plug. You that are the cheesiest son of a bitch. Sex, but I would think about that. <laughs> See, here's what Patrice. She is. She no, is, but Patrice. She is fucking sexy. No, but Patrice, what you're yeah. saying is you want to get a girl. So you're saying I'll get a girl that's completely has no self esteem and build her up. Did I say that? Yeah. Well, you're I didn't saying. Say that, you're stupid. saying. What are you saying? You know, Voss, you try to make profound statements in your own fucking mind that has nothing to do with what's just was said. You got a good point you're a there. Fucking idiot. You got a good point. You just make up what you want to say because you have it in your fucking mind. All right, so. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, Let's let Lisa Loeb go before she hates uh, us. Lisa, well, good luck. No, thank you. So much, Seriously, I'm always interested to hear <laughs> like somebody wrong. else's opinion on how they see it. I'll fix you up. Just call me up or MySpace me. I'll fix you up, Lisa. I'll fix this right yeah, up. Yeah, Patrice O'Neill from Web Junk 20, uh, matter of fact. There, I, do, I do agree. I think it's so important that you have to be an individual and you have to have things that you're excited about in your life and, and you're always trying to be a better person and learn how to enjoy your life. That makes you a better partner for another person you later. Gotta, you just got to stay in the game until love hits you between the eyes. There that's, you go. That's what happens. You can't, uh, you can't put a label <laughs> oh, on it. God. Gotta hit you there. Until <laughs> love hits you between the eyes. That's what like I'm saying. Let's go. With this How about somebody's but somebody's everyone goes out there with... <laughs> between the eyes is a kill yeah. shot. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but everyone goes yeah, out there and says, well, you know, she has to be this, 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 and this. And then it, one day you're just walking on the street or something and bam, it hits you. I yes. yes. didn't even know where it came what from. Out the window. No, no guy does that. No guy goes out there like that. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Guys go she, out. Here's a date. You're date, saying right? she's going out there like no, that. No, I'm not saying she's going out there. Guys go out and go, all right, I hope I'm going to get some pussy tonight, right? right? Girls go out and go, all right, I hope I meet somebody I want to give some pussy to tonight. <laughs> she's, perfect all, world. she's always, a woman is always not, they're never hunting, so they're That's just hoping. Oh, that, never. I hunted in my day. Oh, I was looking for you. <laughs> oh, please. And then I ate my kill. Oh, you ate your kill. Oh, chocolate <laughs> sauce. I like Lisa. No, she got Lisa's. Lisa's smart, man. She's a, she got some shit with her, and she double talks too. And this is not this is not offensive, Lisa. She's like a guy because she double talks mm -hmm. very well where it sounds like. And you go, wait a minute, she is. She didn't say shit. And she that's did what very well against you, no, Patrice, she, right there. No, that's what I'm saying. Did very well. She's very good, but yep. she's like a dude, and that's what that's who she's going to have to meet. She can't meet this dating guy. She has to meet a complete dick for her <laughs> that she's, you know, like, I enamored with. Somebody who, who, is, who can deal with that. Yeah, deal with her. Control. She's a controlling girl. Yeah. You can hear it. She runs shit. She's yeah. pretty. So to a 45-year-old guy... She's like fucking, she's d d the shit. And she can control that. Make them buy, you know, the whole f canister thing. Buy stuff it, is totally bizarre to me. But it, I buy all my own stuff. It, right, yeah. But it was control. It but was you, just need like, guy, you, you need a guy, you need a guy that's going to be goals. like, you need a guy that's going to be like, eh, I might call you. Yeah, beat it, Lisa. Yeah. No, I will not do that. Yes, you will. No, I won't. If I you don't find, if you, you're not going to find happiness until you do it. I recently took someone out of my cell phone. Because I didn't want that anymore. Yeah, because you were scared because he did it for you. Yeah. And you had a little scared. twinge down scared. between the thighs because you ha you met a guy that yeah. had you actually thinking of him. Actually, and you erased his number actually, there was so a, you don't call there him There was again. an episode where the guy was on his cell phone the whole time. You liked him more because I think he wasn't giving you as much he attention. he didn't give a shit right. about and you. and then when I st stopped and... Th thought about it for a second. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm not going to deal with this. But that was why at first you uh, were more interested in him. I that's think. your fear of being the woman. That's your fear of nature of you of, because that's your nature is to be like, look at your man with that big blinky eyes. I love you. <laughs> I love you, booby. And that's how you really want to be. You can't be Miss Tough number one single and at the same time love a guy. It ain't yeah, going to happen. Can. Really? Can. Why is it going on now, Lisa? Um... Because I'm still looking. Yeah, there's, there's a second season that has to be filmed. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I, 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 I know how this season no, works. You know, and no offense, you know Lisa, I love you. And number one OBGYN. Oh, we're almost done. Hmm? Wow. What? Can I have a call? No, I'm just kidding. I said uh, number I'm one OBGYN. It, and and it, no it offense, Lisa, that, that, that was that was good. Hey, that was exciting, baby. Listen, listen, you are you are right, excited. This girl's yeah. good looking. She's intelligent. She's gonna be the right. I'm telling. I watch the show and I go, if I was single, I guarantee I would try to go out with her. But that's no fucking big deal for you. Listen, let's let Lisa go because we want her to call back someday. Why? Oh, yeah, no, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa, I give you a lot of credit, man. We beat you up and you were you you hung right She's in a there. Trooper. You did all right. I love her.
You like oh, black men, Lisa? Huh? Are you racist? That's so early. I just woke up. <laughs> no, you did great. Thank you. All right. Thank um, you, Lisa. So, we'll so talk to you all soon. It's, this it, picture's delicious. It's on the E! channel. It's uh, number one single with Lisa Loeb. Right. Oh, and I have a new album out. The very best of Lisa Loeb. <laughs> you gotta say that. Really? Yeah. Right, the, the very, very best, best of Lisa <laughs> Lowe. What is the song "Stay on There" eighteen times? <laughs> oh <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh me! It's a bunch of remixes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it, what happened is every date on the show reinterpreted the song and. There you the go. Song. No, it's not. It's, song. it's uh, a bunch of other songs. Some you heard on the radio. Some you have not heard on the radio. Very All right, Lisa. Thanks for being a good sport today. Thanks, you guys. All right, it's Lisa Loeb, everyone. Take care. Bye. Cool. Hey, Lisa was pretty cool. She's cool. Yeah, she's a good girl. She took, she took your shit, Patrice. She's a good girl. Dishing that misogynistic <laughs> ass out of your mouth. And you know what? And it always bo you can't beat nature. Hmm. You can't mm -hmm. beat it. I, I, I'm not trying to say, hey, this is my fit. And you cannot know, beat me. That's was, why people was, are going to listen to your show. You whittle things down to a primal level yeah. that is so primitive and just, you know, here's men, here's women. And if you don't uh, agree with me, go fuck yourself. There's, not, there's no nuance. There's no exceptions to rules. You have relationships yeah. figured out like a mathematical problem it is, that is exact. It is, it is uh, done. There's no art to it. There's no... Uh, form. It's bah, 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 bah. it's it's math. That's it's, and that's what I love it's, about you. It's what sharks do. They <laughs> swim, and if there's a baby floating, it eats it. Yeah. You can't go. Oh, that shark. He should be taken for for psychological evaluation. He is what he is. Maybe the shark's looking for something else <laughs> in the foot. No, <laughs> he's, he's looking at. He's, he's looking at. Right. This girl is is like as as sexy as she, as smart and as quick as she is. She, 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 she does not want mm -hmm. a guy that fucking, you know. You can't love until you love yourself. <laughs> she doesn't need a guy who'll buy her we're, bowls. She needs a guy to go, $300 bowls, bitch. I'm going to put this on your head. Where's the Lisa Loeb greatest hits, by the way? <laughs> I've been in radio for 20 some odd years, man. I, I, can't, I can't find a second. I think Lisa song Lou has her. more songs. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's 18 she, tracks on this. I, funny, I see she's Stay. She's a funny girl. Maybe yeah. that was a joke. And she burns yeah. Stay in the middle of the greatest hits. <laughs> Is maybe, that the greatest? Greatest hits right there? It's uh, the tenth track is Stay. Obi, maybe it was a joke, right? Because she's a funny chick, so maybe that was no, a joke that she put Greatest Hits. The very best of Lisa Loeb. Why don't you try to fix her up with Norton? That would be a great day. Yeah, that'd be great. A little bukkake on those glasses. Wonderful. <laughs> the Lilith <laughs> Ain't Fair. Ain't gonna happen. She was huge on the Lilith Fair. Remember the line. Lilith Fair? All right, why don't we take a break and uh, end with... It. Adrian uh, Frost <laughs> and you. I Hate Other People's Kids. We'll get back into that in a few minutes. All right, we got about 15 minutes left in the show, and then uh, we'll pack it up. And then the Opie and Anthony lifestyle thing will continue on. Yeah, Alpha, whatever, uh, whatever everybody does afterwards. There you go. That was fun with Lisa Loeb. You know, a lot of that shit, a lot of that stuff is also produced, obviously. It's a reality well, show. Well, she admitted that. She's trying you know, to make TV as well. You know. It's one of those shows that just annoys me. I can't believe you actually like the show. I don't watch it because I like it. Hope he watches shows just, that he I hates. watch shows yeah. uh, to be annoyed. He watches There's a new one. Annoyed. I don't know if I'm annoyed by it, but I can't stop watching. It's called Date My Mom on MTV. We've uh, got to yeah, get audio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You do uh, Best Week Ever, Best so week you ever, have so to watch I'm, all this stuff. I'm pretty much forced to TiVo and watch all I, I was Ooh. trying to explain Date My Mom to Anthony. It's amazing. Yeah. And the writing. They're writing all the lines for the moms, the, the potential uh, yep. girlfriends. And are the, the moms hot? And the guys. Uh, uh, some are. But that's what's tricky. If you're going for the hot mom thinking she's got the hot daughter, you're screwed. Oh, sometimes man. you get a uh, lemon. Oh, yeah. In there. Big time. Well, did you see on Flavor of Love? Did you see the the episode where he met their, their Hoops' his mom? Yeah. And, and he was all up on. Yeah, she's a white <laughs> version of Hoops. And she yeah. wanted some of that uh, was all, yep. Flavor Flav cock. And Hoops oh. said, Hoops said, she was like, yeah, you know, it, this may happen again. Yeah. You do, you do Best Week said. Ever? I do Best Week Ever. What's that? Before. Free food at the market? It's, the um, it's a show on VH1, <laughs> which is a, a panelist show. And, I've seen uh, it. It's horrible. I did one of those. They used one word. 
Well, I did one and for me. Fault, what, and no, that's their fault. What? No, because you're scared to use anything you Actually, say. Actually, it's too funny, Rich. You're too funny, so we're editing your lines. Anthony and I well, were on that show as well. Yeah. Were you? They that's used right. one one line. We were one talking line. about Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Again, same we thing. We made about one or two lines. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's yeah that get, happens sometimes. We'll talk about Date My Mom maybe tomorrow. we got to get some audio of it. But yeah. uh, it's Adrian Frost. I hate other people's kids. We talked about the restaurants. Yeah, I, I, I just want to get through a couple of things. Uh, we, is there anything in the book? Suggestions? that you can do to protect yourself against this. Um, I find myself wanting to kill children. You know, there are, com- there are combatants against kids and parents. Um, one thing I suggest is to, to stare at the kids, you know, when they're acting up. Like, oh, I do like, that. Like, like, just stare okay. at them. I do that. I scare Make, them. Perfect the kind of scare, the, the stare that makes them think maybe you have a van. You know, and maybe in that van is a bag. Free candy. Free candy. Mm-hmm. But just stare. Um... I give the evil stare. Yeah, the evil I stare love and they up in the, kids. And then you get the puzzlement of the parents going, "Wow, what, what What's happened? Why is the kid crying? Exactly. Why you I'll you make them cry. cry. I'll look at a kid like if a kid's in a shopping cart and you're in the supermarket and the kid's like doing some annoying kid thing, grabbing its shit or uh-huh. picking its nose or drooling mom, or something. Mom, 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 won't mom. shut up. I'll look and and make a face like like. Stupid little motherfucker! Yeah, like look at him all evil, and they'll do, just go like. Eh. You can and also then, pull him aside. What's the matter, sweetie? And then I'll just look at like the corn on the on the wall. You can like I'm corn shopping. On the wall. You can also pull him aside and and let them know that if they don't stop what they're doing, that that somebody like Santa Claus or Easter Bunny is is gonna die. Oh, that's a good that's one. That's always a good one. I, I don't want to interact with them. I wouldn't go so much for no. Grandma and Grandpa because that could be really scarring. But yeah, that won't get you locked up pulling No interaction. That's my rule. No interaction with children. Are you kidding me? You're telling me you can't pull some of these kids to the side? They run with abandon wait, wait, in you public. Can't, you think you could you go up to a stranger's kid? to kidnap kids? a child? It's harder to kidnap someone's dog than it is to kidnap a child. Yeah, the way easy. that they're just let... You know what no. I did in a restaurant Seriously. once? Kid was running around like crazy and no. running. Uh, he he made a little course around the table and around my table, back to his table like a figure eight thing, and just dun, 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 running, running, running. And and the mother was there with one of her friends for the afternoon, not doing shit about it. So I uh, I had my water glass on the edge of the table. And as the kid came around, I hit it and mm-hmm. knocked it on the table and went, Jesus Christ, like that. At like the and kid knocked him. it, and the kid goes, "I didn't do it. I Who didn't." Who are they do- gonna believe? Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm like, Psh. like I'm gonna knock my own water on the tail off the thing. I, yeah, maybe if he isn't running around, uh, this wouldn't happen. And the kid got the, uh, the swat on the ass, mm-hmm. and I just looked at the kid and laughed. And the kid kept looking over at me, and I was just smiling and like laughing at him. That's what happened. It made me feel so good. It's I a was lesson hoping. learned. Hopefully, yeah. he learned his lesson. Yeah. Whoa. So now yep. that you've been on the show an hour, uh, why don't you tell us what the book's about? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you say sitting I mean, on a plane next to a kid is aggravating, but yes. Okay, but wait a second. Is it also kicking, a... when they're moving the trays Listen. up yep. and down and they're kicking? And you know when babies scream. Tell the first class story. Tell the first class story. I have. It's not aggravating. Have you ever had a seat on a plane? And you're sitting there, and you're all comfortable, and then a big person sits down, and their body just overlaps. Yeah, that's you. just as it's, bad. That's just as bad. And, just usually, as and bad. a lot of times okay. they have to pay for two seats, but that's not yeah. what we're talking about. It's just mm-hmm. aggravating. Anything can Tell be the first class story, Anthony, with the candy. <clears throat> yeah, uh, in first class. First of all, I don't think children should be allowed in first class. There should be a rule. No children allowed in first class. It's first class. It's not uh, uh, class. We go in there. We're sitting. And uh, this woman comes in with a kid, and the kid is screaming for candy. I want candy, 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 I want candy. You know what you do at that point if you're a mother? Shove so much candy candy. in the fucking kid's mouth. The whole flight. (coughs) This, I hurt you. Just keep shoving it in. Did you threaten with water? You don't try. Yeah, I'll (laughs) spill it on you. (laughs) You don't try. You don't try to teach a child a lesson at that point by going, no, it isn't candy time. No, it's not the time for it. No, you've been bad, so you don't. This is what we watch. You appease your little fucking organism for the uh, for the sa- safety and sanctity of the rest of the aircraft or there should be an airlock chute where any passenger <clears throat> has the right 
to drop your child from 35,000 feet. Yeah. They should just I have their own that. area. Like, you have to put your yeah. animals hey, in the you container. Go. And things only shift slightly during takeoff. They, they tell you that when they're doing the instructions. The back of the plane. Just put them in a, in a carrier right above. It'll be padded. It'll be air conditioned. Okay. They can have a water bottle like a hamster. You have oh, a cat, right? You have a cat. Good. You have two cats. And it isn't aggravating when cats come and they rub up on you. My cats now, don't do you know, that. Do cats do it? Do a lot of cats do it? No. Do, some listen, cats do, sure. So, so, so should I, every time a cat rubs, like, pick them up and heave them against a wall, would that get you upset about if someone did that to your cats cat? Cats don't know better, and that's their instinct. Cats you don't know Take a cat to the movies. No, we're not talking about five-year-olds. Shut up. We're not talking about five. You're talking about two-year-olds on a plane that are crying. She doesn't take a three. cat on the plane or old. the movies yes, or the restaurant. No, no I don't. Okay. If a, at someone's house, if a cat rubs up on you and gets his hair on you and you're allergic not to it. Not my cats. Yeah, not your, oh, because your cats are perfect. Because, no, because but I everybody put them in the other room. Because no, I put no. them in the other room Listen, and I decap if, the house. No, please. If there's so two, people don't get but it. I gotta, Listen, but, if but I gotta fits, go. eat it. How Let me tell you something. I got to go with Rich on this one, though, what? against you for a second. You're talking like yeah. a parent with their kids. Yeah. Not my cat. Yeah, not my cat. Because we put them in the other room. That's why I'm saying that. You know what? Put them in the other room. Doesn't matter. No. Doesn't matter. There is hair. There is cat hair. When I leave right. anyone's house your with a cat, then we decat, are, we decat no, the house because no, we have friends who are allergic. What do you mean decat, decat the house? It's impossible to completely decat a house. You know how you decat a house? Get rid of your cats. You know, That's how you decat them. Nothing wrong with what kicking I'm a saying. pet. We try to be respectful. We make an effort to be respectful. Okay, you're talking about five and above. But you do know when you go to a house what you're expecting. What if I, I go to a house with a child for another thing, when if I go yeah. to a house with a child, candy I wrappers can't, all I can't, over the floor. I can't get mad. I can be mad, but I can't because really. Because you're entering it. their environment. I'm, that's their domain. Yeah. Keep your kids in, locked in this house. I'm fine with it. It's right. when I'm out and about. There's, there's a part in the book that uh, caught my interest. Okay. It, it's titled "Guess What Blank Did." <laughs> Yeah, and, and I say, unless oh. it's cured cancer, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Bravo. Everyone's got a story how I genius their kids care. are. Guess what little Johnny did today? Uh, died, I hope. Exactly. It's like, you know what he did? He popped his own top on the Coke can. Big fucking deal. Ooh, motor skills. Oh, wow. Wonderful. That's great. <laughs> unless he, unless <laughs> that's great, if a man. box of toothpicks falls on the floor and Johnny can tell me how many are in them and still in <laughs> the box... Then I'll be very thrilled. Yes. I want to hear about that. No one that. cares. No one cares. <laughs> wow, you're, you're telling me he did something he's supposed to do. That's right? Wonderful. That's what he pooped. Big, I pooped. I did too. Ooh, and wonderful. in my pants sometimes if I'm drunk. Do we want to <laughs> applaud that? Jesus. Do you roofie yourself so your husband will fuck you? Yes. Holy shit. Holy <laughs> Rich just can't leave it alone, man. Roofie and the worst yourself. part is that my first instinct was to just to answer honestly. And I said yes. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it. Jesus. I want to cover Rich. that up. Roofie yourself. You got me again. I do it when I masturbate, for God's sake. <laughs> do you do? Okay, now, you, that's you, fine. You're, you're not having kids because you hate kids or you can't have kids? Or? I can't have kids. You can't. The truth oh. is that I can't. Oh, that's sad. Oh, oh, that's thank you for being oh, no, 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 it's now, right? now, thank you for bringing the show to a dead halt. That's now it. you can't have kids. Now you yeah. brought the whole yeah, show that's, down. But that's the, the you are going oh, okay. All right. Oh, no, 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 ouch, no. ouch. Terrific. But see what <laughs> I'm gonna make a book called I Hate Cookies because I can't have them all. Because you can't eat them. <laughs> yeah. Got the yeah, diabetes. I, I hate Jello. Yeah. Yeah. I can't have cookies. No, I can't have cookies. What the fuck is drinking soda, nigga? I hate cookies. It's because yeah. I'm 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 kind of self-centered, selfish, yeah. greedy. I like being able to go somewhere and not. Ha when I see parents I love them when they're well lugging behaved. shit, when they're on the when they're on the train and stuff, and they're well behaved and they're adorable, and when, when you make faces at them and they're cute and they giggle, no problem. Then you leave. Right, you yeah. know, but when you got the 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 uh, sprinkler crying, da, 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 going on, and the high pitch screaming, and how the empty is the your pond. house going to be, Anthony, right without kids? Fuck that! How empty do you I think your care. girlfriend is going to think the house is going to be without three little echo. delicious kumias <laughs> running around? We love echoes. <laughs> we love an echo. <laughs> and if the room's too quiet, there's plenty of walls for another plasma television set <laughs> instead of a fucking crib or a baby thing or a college fund or anything else. I gotta say for when I want a goddamn Jaguar in the garage I get a Jaguar in the garage because it doesn't have to be a goddamn 
college for a goddamn kid. When your girl peeks uh-huh. out the window and sees the other kids and they were playing and she gets that longing look, <laughs> she's not gonna she's not gonna say shit because she knows how much you hate kids. But you know, she's gonna be like, Daddy, why can't I ride a yeah. bike? And he's gonna uh, say, Because you can't have one. I'm with Patrice uh, because I gotta tell you, I'm I'm twelve cylinders. Oh, hold on, oh, I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm in love with my car. He, he reminded me of something. You know, my house where I grew up for forever. I you know I'm one of seven kids, so our our house had all the activity, right? And we lived next door to a couple that didn't want to have kids. And it, and, and it made sense when they were young and stuff, but we were in this house for well over 20-some-odd years, and they were our neighbors for 20-some-odd years. Man, as the years went on, you would see the, the faces get sadder and yeah. sadder, yeah. sadder, sadder, sadder. sadder. And the look, and I used to remember seeing the look out the window as the lady, now older, is looking at us, the kids, Just having a ball. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, may, I might With pull an look, Angelina look, eventually. She's in a, you she's know? In a robe yeah. like this. It just out looking and <laughs> drinking coffee, drinking her tea, yeah. and you're like, Hi, her Mrs. Johnson. Irish coffee, and like, drinking her herbal tea, <laughs> and, and, she, and she slowly walks in and closes her balcony or two doors behind. Right, right. Why is she there then? Why isn't she then on a, a goddamn sailboat in the Mediterranean, yeah, her drinking choice. her coffee there? Get the fuck out of your kidless house and go have well, fun I'm in the whole saying, world. Let me ask you that when your girl says she want to drop oh, a few Andy. Patrice. Watch what happens. Okay. To uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> oh, Patrice, listen, you know, all I'm saying is I can relate to what Patrice was seeing because I've watched it for many years slowly turn. The sad thing. And, 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 yeah, and then they end up, they end <laughs> right. up moving somewhere. Get out. Yeah. Let me you tell you something. You're going to wake up yeah. at like 4 in the morning like, baby, why are you, what are you doing? She's like, no, no, go back to sleep. That's when she sneaks in to the sneaky window in the back and peeks at all the families. And, <laughs> and you got this big ass, hello, 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 hello. You know what's it's right <laughs> next door to us? You know what's the house right next door? I noticed outside is a big, uh, in the backyard, a big trampoline. <laughs> so she's gonna see the there's going to be a bunch of kids. going to be jumping out of the Her head's just going to be going up and, and down. And you're going to hear a dad go, hey guys. all right, everybody, it's kid, it's family activity <laughs> day. And your girl's going to be like, what are we doing today, Anthony? Staying in on Pal Talk again? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sweetie. <laughs> Maybe, you know, let me tell you something. At the end of this month, I'm going to be on a goddamn Royal Caribbean ship uh, in the Caribbean. With no yeah, kid to worry bring, about. Bring, no. And there's kids, kids on that fucking yeah. thing. If you see the commercial, there's yeah. kids on it. All right, let's yeah. let me tell you something. Listen, there's... these guys have been sitting for hours. Trust me, Voss. I saved you from a bomb. I, I thought. I, no, I had oh, a, I, I know. I just know. That's what I'm good at. Yeah, I just was... saved you. Trust me. Oh, no. I had a. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right try did... it out. No, forget it. Go ahead. No, let's go. No, let go ahead. No, 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 no. Let's go. Fucking no, Opie, man. Come on. Rich, I saved you from a bomb. Don't erase the whole show with like, oh, you're the bomb. No, fuck it. No, dude, no. you killed today. Uh, uh, thank you. Come on, let, let it rip. No, I got nothing. Come on, I got man. nothing right now. Let it rip. All right, as a goof okay. now. As a goof. Now, because well, now we all know it's going to bomb. What would it have no, been? No, it's not a bomb. It's just uh, something from the heart. No, I'm saying it's all we know the... now, this thing okay. is going to bomb. Okay, what right would it have been? Yeah. Okay, when you're when you're you know you're saying you're on your Royal Caribbean cruise and it's yeah. great, but you don't know the feeling when you're sitting in the stands of your your kids' basketball game and they score two points. You, it, let me tell you, you don't know the, the the fucking how good it feels when you see your kid accomplish something for real. Not opening a get a him can. a tissue. All right, oh, uh, listen, no, and, and you no, know no, no listen, no, no, yeah. listen. You fucking set, set up, up to make this a very special episode. Okay. Of exactly. First of all, you know something, Rich? Something First of all, I, I wish they could put my uterus back in. Yeah, I really hold on, hold on, wait. Little soliloquy. The boy Dahmer family felt the same fucking way. They were all proud of him knocking a home run when he was in eighth grade. That's right. And Drilling uh, into Asian yeah. guys' heads oh, yeah. and, and eating them. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Hold on, the void filler. And now she thought. wants her uterus back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Story. yeah. I'll put a Ziploc bag in there. Oh, I'm so touched God. by what you've done. Well, yeah, oh, well I'm just saying, you know. What do you? What do you? Oh uterus my! Back. Listen, she said listen, she has listen, no uterus. Uh, Jesus. Wow. Hell of a way to lose some oh, weight. Get these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you are horrid. I'm sorry. I, I, just, I was just feeling good. All right. Horrid, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to say hi to these guys. They've been hanging out for three and a half hours. Hey, gentlemen. How's it going? I uh, just uh, want to tell you, check out the website, thegenius.com. I got some shirts for you guys. They're cool. Uh-huh. Well, Does they're giving us our, our our MySpace uh, page back. Opening Anthony, that genius. Right? That's so, right. How do you spell oh, right. that? Uh, V-A-G-E-N-I-U-S dot com. And what is it? 
Uh, it's clothing. I'd like to move into some other things eventually. Okay. Uh-huh. So we'll check out the website. website. How about her <laughs> uterus? It's empty. Oh, 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 listen, listen. Holy shit. Listen. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> What a way to end. Listen, she's got to get a plug in. Adrian Frost. Hold on, hold on. We got 10 seconds left. All right, quick. Adrian Frost, the book is I Hate Other People's uh, Kids. We really think this is a good book. Yeah, Check thanks, it out for man. yourself. Thank you. Love the cinema.